Hey guys, welcome again. This is the first video of Unreal Engine 5 and C++ series. In this series of videos, we will talk about everything you need as a beginner to Unreal Engine 5 and C++. We will create a complete shooter game like The Walking Dead and we will cover some most important and advanced topics like uh, multiplayer games. Let's get started to C++ in this first lecture. Hello everyone, welcome to this section. In this section, we will cover C++ basics. If you already know C++ or if you're able to understand these topics, then you can easily skip this section and jump into the next section. But if you're a complete beginner into C++ program or if you already know some other language but still don't know correctly about C++, then you can uh, cover this section and learn these topics. Remember again, these topics are very important and we will use these things. If you don't know one of these topics or some of these topics, then you will not be able to understand in the future. So let's talk about which topics we will cover in this section. In this section, we will start from building first C++ program. Then we will talk about compile and error, talking about how a compiler can compile C++ program and what are error, types of errors and many more. Then we will jump into variables and constants. What are variables, how to declare variables and how to use variables. And finally, we will talk about constants. What are constants? and how to declare constants. So these are some important topics as a beginner to C++. Then we will jump into arrays. Arrays are also one of the most important topics in C++. We will cover arrays and we will set up array values from for loop. Then we will jump into expressions and statements. We will talk about what are expressions and what are statements and then we will talk about operations after that we will talk about if else statement we, i will tell you how to use if how to give a condition to if and if uh, that condition was false then how to use else statement if we have two or three conditions then how to use if else statement so we will cover all these topics in if else statements and then we will jump into looping we will talk about three types of looping while loop do while loop and far loop we will talk about difference between them and i will explain you how to use this in a real program and then we will jump into functions i will show you what are functions what are function return types what is wide return type of function how to give a names to functions and what are different rules for giving names to functions and finally we will talk about passing arguments into functions and uh, how to use function parameters at the very end of this section we will talk about pointers and i will show you what are pointers in c and how much they're important there so these are the topics which we will cover in this section so let's jump into the first lecture and start it Hey, let's build our first program in C++. For doing that first, let's come to main function and talk about main function a little bit. For writing our first program, we have to write end at the first. Why should we write end? End means that our function needs to return some integer at the end of the execution. And we do so by returning zero at the end of program. Zero is the standard for the successful execution of the program what does it means that we are going to return from function and is the return type of function and it means integer when a function has a return type of integer it have to return something it have to return an integer in main function we are going to return zero in every main function of c++ program because zero is the standard for the successful execution of the program we have to do so in main function that's end and after end we are going to write main 
what is main main is the name of our function and that is the default function of every c++ program if you don't write main function in our c++ program then compiler will not understand our program and it will not be able to run our program because when compiler is going to uh, compile our program then it starts it from main function if there is no main function in our program then compiler will not understand because, because he will say there is no main function and how can it compile or program it's required in every c++ program to write main function what is this parenthesis after main this is for passing arguments to a function main function don't have any arguments so it should be empty we will talk about uh, passing arguments and function parameters in next lectures because that, that is very important for functions and function is a large section in C++. We have to um, explain everything step by step. It's not the place for explaining all these things. If you can't understand these things right now, then don't worry because it's not for understanding right now. It is only for um, explaining why should we write these things because we will talk about functions and function return type, function um, parameters and return itself and returning some value from function in next sections. Uh, for now you have to remember the structure of a C++ program. Opening curly brackets. Here we have opening curly bracket that determines the scope of a function. What does it mean? That is the body of function. When we are going to open and close curly brackets, this is a scope or this is an area or this is a body of something. What is what is this body of? This body belongs to something which is written here or we can see this body belongs to a function which is written here. In this example, we can see that this body which is here belongs to the function above which is main. We have to write uh, the scope of every C++ function. It is required that we write a scope for every uh, C++ function. For writing or defining a scope for a function, we have to write opening curly brackets at the top and closing curly bracket at the end of the body of function. That's it for these curly brackets. And now we are going to talk about return zero. As we are talked about end, that this is the return type of function, and it means that our function have to return something. Then in end, as end means integer, then our main function have to return some integer. Zero is integer, but in main function we have to write return zero because zero is the standard for the successful execution of the program it is required we have to write and the return zero in C++ program if you can say we are going to write semicolon at the end of our statement we will talk about statements just in next lectures uh, this is the rule in C++ that we have to end every statement with a semicolon semicolon is required if you don't put semicolon at the end of any statement then c++ compiler will give you an error that you didn't put any semicolon at a statement it's required and finally we talked about closing curly brackets this is our very simple structure of our first program in c++ first function in c++ let's do this in visual studio code let's open visual studio code when for first time you open Visual Studio Code, you can see this area. This is our Visual Studio Code and we are going to uh, start our coding by opening new file. We can start our work by creating our new file from here or we can come to file and, and click and new file. Now we have new file. We can close our get started window from here. Uh, we have our new file with the name of untitled1. We are going to write our first program in this file. As you know, for writing our first program, first we have to write end. Let's do that. This is our end. 
and let's write main because that's the name of function let's open um, parentheses because that is for passing arguments to a function as main function don't need any arguments then we are going to leave it empty let's press enter because we should have some room for writing our code and understanding it better let's open curly brackets that is the body or that is the scope area for a function let's press enter as you can see visual studio code has very good uh, rules for writing programming in it it will be very easy for you to write programming in uh, ide like visual studio code and now let's type return space zero and let's uh, end our statement by writing semicolon at the end this is our first c plus plus program uh, as you can see it here let's save our program uh, let's come to file and click and save we have to um, select a place for that then i want to select desktop and give it a name i want to write first program dot cpp why should we write dot cpp uh, uh, at the end of the name of our program uh, you should know that this is required for c++ because this extension belongs to c++ and computer will understand that this is a c++ program dot cpp type is for c++ and if you want to write a c++ program then we have to give it an extension with dot cpp it's required for every c++ program c++ pro uh, programming also has many more extensions like dot h and we have many more also we will talk about them in the clickshares but for now you have to remember this that you should give dot uh, cpp at the end of your name for when you're saving your program let's click and save and it already exists i will tell him yes i want to replace it now you can see our program is here we saved our program and now let's compile our program for compiling our program i can come here but if you don't see this area here you can come to uh, terminal and click a new terminal when you're creating your new terminal then you will have the compile button here also now let's click and compile button and we will compile our first program let's do that right now our program compiled successfully and uh, fortunately we don't have any error in our program it means that our structure for writing c++ program is completely right and there is no error but as you can see this program is doing nothing because it is printing nothing to the terminal or uh, at all it is doing nothing but you should not expect uh, doing something from this uh, small program of c++ it is just the structure of uh, writing your first program now if you're going to um, write a program which should do something for us we have to write some more code hey welcome again this was our first program in c++ and uh, it was a program which was doing nothing uh, because uh, for a program which should print something for us into the terminal we have to write some more code uh, then for writing that let's uh, do that now and come to our slides print into the terminal in c++ for printing into the terminal we have to write c out c out is an object which is responsible for printing some characters into the terminal or to display a stream of characters to do so we are writing c out after c out there are insertion operators insertion operators which is pre-programmed for all standard c++ data types it sends bytes to an output stream object it means that this is required for c out to send some characters to the terminal for printing if you don't try to these insertion operators then your compiler will not be able to print hello world into the terminal it's required and as you can see we are going to write our hello world inside these double quotes what are these double quotes for 
we are going to write on the text in double quotes when we are going to print our characters or text into the terminal we have to write that in these double quotes it is rule in c++ if you don't write any text in double quotes then you will have error as you can see again we are going to write semicolon at the end of statement because it's required in every c++ program let's do this program in visual studio code but remember we will have compile error don't afraid of compile error because in programming you will face many kinds of errors you have to fix it let's write c out insertion operator and double quote hello world and now let's end our statement with a semicolon this is our program let's click and save now our program is saved and now let's compile before compiling let's scale our terminal because we are going to execute our program in a new terminal let's compile it now as we expected we have error in our program why we have error let's talk about this error a little bit here there is our uh, program name our file name and in uh, function this is our function means in main function our error is in our main function if there is more functions then we know that our, in which function our error is and we will search only in that function and again uh, there is our file name there is line number three and error what is error uh, it is c out was not declared in this scope what does it mean compiler can't understand c out our compiler says what is this c out i don't know why compiler can't understand an object because this is not the default keyword of c plus plus program then that's why compiler is can't understand it this is defined in a different library but let's talk about libraries we have different kinds of libraries in c plus plus we have uh, mostly two types of libraries standard libraries which is c++ main libraries and user defined libraries which is defined by programmers or we can de define our own library by, by ourselves then we have different kinds of uh, standard libraries and there are many objects which is defined in standard libraries for using uh, some objects from a specific uh, library we have to include that library into our program it is required then it means that our c out keyword is not defined by default this keyword is defined in a library which name is io stream or input output stream library input output stream or io stream library is a standard library for c++ programs if you are going to use c out keyword c in keyword or many more keywords then which belongs to io stream then we have to include this library uh, if you don't know about uh, different kinds of libraries in c++ you can search it in google and you will be able to find um, library for anything you need like math library like using for games there's different kinds of libraries you can use them in this picture we are going to use io stream library because we need c out keyword how to include a library into our program it is very easy as you can see we are going to write hash include and the name of our library inside angle brackets this is the structure of including a library a standard library into our program this is a preprocessor directive as we talk about it io stream is a library which is using for input output streams now let's include our library remember that uh, we have to include all libraries at the top of our program before main function before any other function we have to include our library 
Now let's include our library into our program and we will come back to our slides. Now let's do that. For doing that, I'm coming here and uh, let's have some space for uh, including our library. I am going to write hash include space angle bracket and io stream close angle bracket. As you can see, here is some spelling problems. You should be very careful when you're writing something in programming language. If there is even one spelling error, then your program will not be executed. Let's run our program. But before running, remember we have to save our program and kill our old terminal. Let's recompile our program. Click on compile. Again, we have errors what are these errors now let's talk about these errors again this is our mm, file name and in len 5 this time yes our cout is in len 5 and now this time that is a different error now this time our c++ compiler understands cout because we uh, have our io stream library here this time our C++ program can understand that which what is C out but it mm, cannot understand that which C out you want you're talking about. It is an example from compiler that uh, you're talking about is TD C out or is there any other C out you're talking about. We can write different kinds of uh, functions objects classes with the same name let's talk about this issue for some time let's talk in real world example you may say different people with the same names or different cities or different places with the same names then when you say two people with the same name how can you differentiate between those two people because they have same names then it is little confusing for people for solving this problem in our social life, we have uh, last names, uh, surnames, and father names, and many more to solve this uh, naming convention between people uh, that we can understand someone like. If there is two people with the same name, then we can use his last name or his father name or many more. Uh, it means that uh, when we are talking about someone, we are going to explain that with it's with his last name that who is he in programming we have the same issue sometimes we can you know, define many objects functions or classes with the same names because we are using it maybe cout is uh, declared in many functions in many libraries for doing different kinds of jobs then how c++ compiler should understand that which cout you're talking about for solving this problem or we can see for solving naming convention in uh, programming we have namespace what is namespace for namespace is using to provide extra information about a function about uh, an object or a variable or uh, many more now our compiler can understand that what is C out, but uh, still it needs some uh, extra information about it that in which library you're talking about C out. For solving this problem, we have namespace for IO stream, which is STD. STD is the namespace of our IO stream library. Um, every library have its own namespace. We can find its namespace easy by searching it by in Google or when we are searching information about any library, then we can find its namespace as well. Or when we are going to write a class or a library, then we will uh, declare our own namespace. We will talk about um, declaring our own namespaces, giving our own namespaces to our functions and to our objects. In next lectures now you have to remember that for io stream library we are going to use std which means standard then after std we have the scope resolution operator scope resolution operator is uh, using for every namespace name it means that we have to write a scope resolution operator after uh, namespace Every time we are writing namespace, then between object and namespace name, 
we have to use scope resolution operator let's do this in our visual studio code and check our code that if it's working or not now let's come to visual studio code and let's write here std and the scope resolution operator now as you can see our this is our complete program and let's run it but before running it as usual we have to save it and kill the terminal and let's recompile it now oh congratulations now we have our hello world sentence in our terminal it means that uh, our program is doing something it's printing hello world into the terminal it is a great program and this is our first program with no error that is a good news for us but now let's uh, do some fun and let's uh, make up an error in our program that uh, you will be able to um, get familiar with the uh, different kinds of errors and solving it you should not be afraid of error in C++ programs or in any other programming language this error is usual and you will face different kinds of errors in every program you should not be afraid of it you should fix it now let's remove this semicolon from the end of our statement and now let's save it i will save it by using Control s and i will recompile it again now as you can see we have error here we made this error by ourselves it says that in this file which is our file name uh, in main function which is our it means in our main function uh, first program again between line number five and six error is there and it says expected semicolon before return it means our error is in two lines not in one line only first is that that our first sentence don't have our semicolon and again error is that when compiler is reaching here that compiler thinks that this sentence still belongs to this sentence it means that you're going to write uh, std hello world these things and write return zero and at the end you're giving a semicolon you should know that uh, these uh, space don't have any meaning in c++ program to solve it let's write semicolon at the end and let's save it let's close let's kill the terminal and let's recompile it again and we will have successful execution again hello world in our terminal remember that uh, space is not issue in c++ uh, i mean like using space using tops or using enters like some if i write this program like this then still if i save it from here and if i compile it it will work like this hello world and even if i remove all the space from here let me remove all the space from here uh, i will remove if i save it again now if i compile it now still it's working then it means in c++ programming giving extra space tabs or pressing many enters it's no problem you can use it but you have to remember the structure you have to use uh, all the operators and a semicolon at the end of every statement and using curly bracket for defining the body of function and these things are required but you can use extra space for your program to make it more beautiful and readable it's up to you that which kind of program you're going to write this is our first program with printing hello world in C++. We will talk about more programs in C++ just in the lectures. See you soon again. Hey, welcome back to this lecture. Here we are going to talk about input. We already know about Cout, STD and many more. 
now we are going to enter our age into our program or we can see we should input some characters to our program to input some things some characters some text or anything you want to our program we are going to write our own program and we should include io stream to our program because this time we are using input streams last time we were using output streams now it's time for input streams we are going to write our main function because it's required as well this is the body of our main function here we are going to write our program for doing that first let's declare an variable we will talk about variables just in two or three in next lectures and uh, we will declare that integer we need an integer value and name it age because we want uh, we want from user to enter his, his age for doing that let's see out std see out is version operator and write enter your age we are asking from the user to enter his age then we are going to output some text for him to know about that now it's time for input for input very simple we are going to write c in and c out for output and c in for input that much easy but here also we are going to use std because uh, we are going to use uh, std namespace from io stream library and c in cure this is the uh, extraction operator extraction operators are used or we can see it is the easiest way to get bytes from an input stream objects these operators are using to get the value from any input stream object into and store that value to a variable in our program now uh, we should declare that variable before using c in now we declare this variable with the name of age we are going to take the value from input stream object and uh, and store that value in our age variable now we are going back again uh, we are going to see out and tell the user your age is and we are going to print this variable age variable which is declared here and we stored a value from c in here and we are going to uh, again uh, see out that value here now if we print then we will be able to hmm, print our age but first we will ask from the user that enter your age and program will be hmm, stopped for him to enter his name sorry his age and when he is entering his age again program will print and tell the user that your age is any number he's typed now let's use this program in our visual studio code let's come to visual studio code here we have our program include our stream and these things we wrote in last programs now here first we are going to declare our variable let's declare it int h and this is our age variable now i'm coming here and to uh, input to tell the compiler to in input something now let's do that i want to use std namespace from standard library and use the in keyword extraction operator and use the variable we are going to uh, store our age there now i want to enter age here now we can uh, store uh, we can enter our uh, age value into our program for doing that let's save first our program and let's compile our program and we will see what's happening in our program now oh sorry <laughs> it's not working it still says hello world oh yeah first we should uh, change the value of hello world and i will write here enter your age now if i save and recompile our program now here we will see enter your age and program is stopped uh, until i can enter my age for example i will enter 40 program finished because we don't have any more code to print our age back to us let's do that to do that i will come here and um, here i will write uh, 
again std and see out insertion operator and i will write my text here in double quote your age is and i will come out from my text again insertion uh, operator and write age and let's end our line by semicolon now if i save my program again and if i recompile it and run it what is problem here uh, your age we can see here now this is our insertion operator and this is our extraction operator again i used extraction operator for c out this is our problem extraction operator are using to get an input value from output stream object and store that in a variable here but here i am using a, a extraction operator for c out it means that i'm telling compiler that uh, uh, store this value here in some variable but he says how can i do that how can i get value from c out because c out is using for uh, going to output something to print something into the terminal then that that is error uh, because uh, we are using extraction operator for c out we should use insertion operator for c out now let's do that and by that we, we will fix our error let's save it and i will kill the terminal again and i will recompile and run our program here as you can see our program is working if i write 40 49 and i enter and the program is telling me your age is 49 if i run my program again and this time i write 60 the program is saying oh your age is 60 years if I run my program again and this time I write 15 program will print your age is 15 years that means that our program is working correctly and our input object is working here we have one line empty space but when I'm going to compile and run my program here we don't have any space we are going to enter our age in same line sometimes we need a new line here or in c++ uh, if you write for example if i enter two lines here and tell uh, again std c out and i will tell you that uh, and enter your name now if i save my program and run my program again here as you can see they will be printed in same line enter your age and enter your name if i give here any lines free space and run my program again it will be same it is same thing enter your age and enter your name why because sometimes we need a space or empty lines here then or new lines how can i add new line into my program to do so let's come to our slides and we will see here how can we enter new line to our program again this is our program here we need one new line because we want from the user to enter his age in new line and again when we are going to output his age we want to write your age is in one line and uh, his uh, age in new line again this is new line to enter new line and again this is for printing new line as well let's use these two for printing new line in our visual studio code now i want to um, enter one new line here for doing that i want my shoot enter insertion operator again and write int l or e in the l and again i will write semicolon at the end two ways for enter new line first uh, e in the l or end line and mm, the second way we can enter our inline inside our double course but for that we have to write forward slash and in by this way i also these two are ways for printing new lines now let's save our program and let's run it we will see 
Oh, we have error here. What is that error for? Let's talk a little bit about that. Again, it is in our mm, first program.cpp file. And here our uh, compiler says that uh, you are entered inline because inline is uh, uh, defined in IO stream library. And again, he says about which uh, inline you're talking about. It means we should uh, uh, provide some extra information about inline about its namespace and the namespace for IO stream library is std let's write that uh, and remember that we do need to write std here because uh, this is inside double quotes and it is defined here compiler will understand it directly we do need to uh, write std before this kind of new line we only need for end or inline here now let's save our program and run it again this time we will have the correct program now he says enter your age now i have to enter my age in new line i will write 20 and enter your age is again he's printing 20 in new line it means we uh, entered uh, a new line two times first here and again here these two times first uh, here is new line and again here is new line it means these two ways are for printing new lines in c++ programs sometimes we need to explain our code for next programmers or for ourselves let me give you an example maybe in future you will come here and you will not be able to understand that why you wrote this code for or uh, for example why was this c out for or why was this c in for or for what kind of age you were printing or for, for imply age it was for whose age you printed you wrote this program then you need to explain your program to someone who is coming and checking your code or even for yourself maybe in the future you will need this explanation for doing that let me write some let me explain some code for next programmers for explaining that i will write I explained this uh, that this age is for our company implies information I need uh, our company implies information that's why I want to write this program or enter this information for, for from them then if now if I can and save my program and run it oh I have error in our uh, main function in our main function here and it says that error invalid use of this. This is a keyword in C++. When I write this, then it says, oh, this keyword, well, why you're using this keyword here? Compiler don't know that you're going to explain this to some programmer. It think that you're using to use this keyword itself. We will talk about this keyword in next lectures. Now then, how can we explain this for next programmers or can we, do this as a comment in C++. I mean as a comment. Comment is used to prevent the execution some code. We don't want to execute that like. Sometimes we don't want to execute a line because we are going to explain that. To do that we are going to use two kinds of comments. Single line comment. Anything written in line after this will not be compiled. And multiple line comment anything written inside these will not compile even if it start in one line and finish in many line below we have two kinds of comments single line commit and multiple line commit single line commit is very easy if i give double slash here then it will it color is changed and now this is a comment compiler will not compile this line now because he knows that this is for more explanation or it knows that it is a comment. This is a single line comment. Sometimes we need multiple line comments. Let me write multiple line comment here. For writing multiple line comment, I should use uh, slash asterisk and write my comment like I will write this is 
a multiple line comment now let me finish it here again i will finish it by writing asterisk and slash again now we have two kinds of comments in our program first one is single line comment which is here just by writing double slash i will be able to write single line comment and by writing slash and asterisk i will be able to write multiple line comment again but uh, i should finish it by writing asterisk and slash again because if i don't finish it then when i will start it compile all code below it will be as a comment let me do that if i remove this then as you can see all this are looks like this is a comment for a c++ compiler i should finish my comment by writing asterisk and slash now let me save this save my program and i will run on my program i will see my program is working very well let me write 80 your age is 80 but still i have comment and more explanation in my program you can use you can explain your code for next programmers or for yourself in future because sometimes you can't understand your own code even that why you were declared a function or an you know, variable or why you used some input output or any code why you use some code you can explain that for better understanding as we know machine language is binary then let me tell you how can we translate our english language to the binary or we're writing our code in english let me tell you like we are going to write main or int or return all these things are in english then how computer can understand english how can we translate our language or english language to the com to the um, computer to cpu to understand it for doing that we have compiler compiler is responsible to convert a computer programming code written by a human programmer into binary code or machine code which is understandable by computer we have compiler for every language its own compiler c++ compiler is responsible for compiling all c++ code which is written by a programmer to the computer then c++ has its own rules sometimes if you uh, don't follow the rules of c++ then c++ compiler will not understand and that time you will face error why many people are afraid of programming because they know that there is error in programming and you should not be afraid of the error you should fix it and fixing it is easy now let's talk about errors what are errors and why an error should occur let's talk about that error is an illegal operation what does it mean as i told you compiler is responsible for translating c++ code into the binary code which is understandable by computer then compiler has its own rules that if we follow those rules then compiler will understand and translate it but if we don't follow the rules of compiler then we know compiler will not understand our code and that time we will have error we have different types of error like syntax error, like semantic error, like linker error, runtime error, and logical error. But what is syntax error? If we don't follow the structure of C++ while writing program, like missing semicolon at the end, what does we mean by uh, uh, syntax error? Syntax error, if we have problem or we can see if we don't follow the structure of C++ program. As we talked about it, this, this is the structure of any C++ program that we should write main function, we should have function body, we should write semicolon at the end, and also we have many more rules, we will uh, learn them step by step. If we don't follow the structure of C++, then we will face syntax error, like if I don't write semicolon at the end and I save it, 
now if i run the program i will have error this is called syntax error and it is says that uh, expected semicolon before closing curly bracket here we need and semicolon if i add that semicolon and i save it again if i run now it we will not have any error now this is syntax mm, error but if a statement is not meaningful to the compiler at that time we will face semantic errors what does it mean now let me write int which is a variable we will talk about variables in next lectures and num3 is equal to 3 plus b now i'm going to add a number to a character which is not meaningful and compiler will not be able to add 3 with a number which is b let's run this and see how, which kind of error we will face now we are facing an error which says that b was not declared in this scope c++ uh, compiler says that i don't know b what is b and how can i add this b to this number it thinks compiler thinks that uh, maybe b is a variable and you you did not declare this in this scope that's why compiler can't understand or this statement is not meaningful for the compiler at all if we want to make it meaningful we should add a number like i will add four here and i will save my program now if I run, I will not have an error because this is a meaningful sentence and compiler can add 3 with 4. Sometimes we write wrong function through to type or incorrect header files or many more this kind of problems in our program. Facing this kind of error is called linker error. Let me give you an easy example. We have main function here and main function starts with a small m. But sometimes if we write uh, main with a capital M, then we will have error. Like let me compile this. Now we have error here. This kind of error is called linker error. For fixing this kind of errors, we should write the right uh, function prototypes and write the correct library to include. Again, we have runtime errors. It occurs during program execution or when program is running a runtime. What is this error? This type of errors is compiled uh, correctly by the compiler. It means compiler cannot detect these errors when it is compiling the program. And the compiler will detect this after or while you're running the program. This kind of errors can crash the program. Now, let me make this kind of error. And num1 and num2 std cout enter two numbers for division see in num1 num2 std see out Dividing num one by num two. Let me fix this problem because we should add std here as well and then we will not face the error. Now let me talk about this program. 
first we'll we first we are declaring two variables here and again we are asking from the user to enter two numbers for division he will enter two numbers num1 and num2 again we will see out dividing num1 by num2 is equal to num1 divided by 2 this is our program with no error we will save it and we will run it hmm it is compiled successful with no error let's write 6 space 3 now compiler uh, now program says dividing 6 by 3 is equal to 2 oh it's correct but now let me make a runtime error hmm i will tell him divide 6 by 0 if i enter oh the program crashes and it not works the last statement is not working because uh, compiler can't uh, divide 6 by 0 dividing by 0 is an error and at the end we have logical error when programmer do logical mistake it is that much easy what do uh, we mean by logical mistake logical mistake let me write a new program for this kind of error we have num1 which is equal to 6 num2 which is equal to 12 and um, 3 which is equal to 3 I want to see out num1 plus num2 divide by 3 let's print this uh, statement I mean I want to add uh, num1 plus num2 i want to divide first i want to add these two numbers and again i want to divide them by num3 it means i want to add 12 plus plus 6 divide them by 3 which will be equal to 18 by 3 which is equal to 6 i want 6 here but it will not be 6 let's do this I want to save my program and let's run the program oh we have error because we uh, we need std namespace here let me save it again and let's run we have 10 here why we have 10 let me tell you why we have 10 here because we were expecting 6 here what compiler is doing first Compiler is going to do 6 plus 12 by 3, which is equal 12 by 3 is 4 and 4 plus 6 is equal to 10. Compiler is doing it like this, but we want it, uh, we don't want it like this. We want 6 plus 12 divided by 3, which is 6. For doing that, uh, we should write a code a little bit different this kind of error which is not detected by compiler and run our program we have successful execution and we have the result here but this is an error because we were expecting 6 and compiler is going to mm, print 10 for us this kind of errors are called logical error to fix this error, we have to uh, write this in brackets. Now, if I save my program and run it again, this time I will have 6. As you can see, this time we have 6 because our program is going to work correct. First, it is adding num1 to num2 and at the last it is going to divide it by num3 this kind of errors are called logical errors and we have to fix them by checking our program again we already declared and used variables but we uh, don't know what is variable and why should we use variable 
A variable is a name given to a memory location. It is a basic unit of storage in a program. What does it mean? Let's talk about variables and memory locations. For example, this is our memory and here we have different locations like these. Now we are talking about variable. Variable is a name given to a memory location. Let me tell you I want to give this location of memory a name. What should be its name? I want to give it a name like A. A is the name of this memory location. If I want to store something in A, it means I want to store that value in this location. Let's let me declare a variable int is a type of variable which is using for storing integer value we already talked about it i want to declare a which is equal to 16. i'm gonna tell compiler that store this 16 in a or what does i mean by that i want to tell compiler that store 16 in this memory location if i want to use this a then I mean I'm telling compiler that use this location or 16. Let me tell you if I want to tell compiler C out A. Then com what will compiler do? Compiler will take the value of A from its location and it will print. It means I'm telling compiler C out or print the result will be 16 because the value of A or the value stored in the location A is 16. Now we know about that. What is variable? Variable is the name is a name given to a memory location. It is a basic unit of storage in a program. This is a basic unit of storage in a program. We can declare another variable with the name of B. We can declare another variable with the name of let me tell you h like we declare another with the name of name itself and we can store values like 20 like 25 like mc and many more these are the locations and these are the names given to the locations and it is called variable good thing in variable is that the value stored in variable can be changed during program execution like what does it means let me uh, give a new slide and like first i want to declare an integer with the name a which is equal to 16 and i will write here that uh, this is our a location and 16 is stored here now in future uh, this is my code here again I'm coming here I'm telling to the program that a is equal to 25 this time I need 25 compiler will take the a what, what is a is the name of a memory location and it will go directly to that memory location uh, and what is the new value for a new value for a is 25 then compiler will remove that value and this time it will be 25 if now i see out my a value uh, it will be 25 but if i but if this time I see out my A value, it will be 16. Because first this time the value of A was 16. And again, we updated the value of A to 25. And when I'm printing the A value six time, it is 16. This is very important to learn about that variable is a memory location and it can be changed. And remember, as we explained, a variable is only a name given to a memory location. All the operations done in a variable will affect the memory location, not the variable itself. What does it mean? Let me come here. A is the name of this memory location. 
which is here if i make any changes in a it will change the memory location which is a here when i updated the value of a to 25 then compiler is going to update the value in that memory location or sometimes if i tell compiler a plus 13 then what compiler will do compiler will not add a because a is nothing compiler will add the um, value stored in the location a it means that compiler will add 25 with 13 adding a plus 13 means adding 25 plus 13 but if i add a plus 13 here then what will it do compiler will add 16 to 13 because this time the value stored in location a was 16 and we updated the that value in 25 this time it is 25 and the last important point is that that variable must be declared before we use it what does it mean we should declare a variable this is the declaration of variable if we are going to use a value then first we have to declare that value let me give this example in our visual studio code let me tell you see out your age is H. First of compiling this, I want I want to tell you this is error. Why it's error? Because we are going to use age, but we did not declare age. Age is not here. Then how compiler should know what is age? Let's compile our program and we will see this error. Now now we have error in our program it is in len 5 error so what oh sorry error is for this we should add std now we have error in our program in len 5 what is error error says that age was not declared in this scope it means that compiler can't understand what is age and it is not declared here or not defined here then how can compiler understand that what, sh what is age remember that we should declare a variable before using that is very important if we use a variable before declaring it then we will have error or let me do let me declare the variable age after using it like age is equal 20 as you can see i declared the variable here it is here and it is 20 but i'm using it before declaring it now let's compile our program and what will happen again as you can see we have error and compiler says the same thing age was not declared in this scope what does it means what well, because we already declared it here that is because C++ compiler is starting compiling program from like this. If you want to use a variable first, you have to declare it and again you are using it. But if you use it first and declare it again after that, then that will be error. First declare it. And again use it that is the way for declaring it as you can see in our powerpoint slides here we have that all variables must be declared before use the important thing is before use if we declare it after use then again we will have the error now we know about variable it's time to talk about variable types we have different types of variables in c++ program or we can see we have different types of data like we have integer data we have decimal point numbers we have single characters like a we have uh, text like hello world 
like this type of data we have different types of data single word and integer decimal points and also we have uh, like uh, false and uh, true value these are different types of value we are using in our programs for storing this value we have different types of value like we can store um, integer value in one type variable we can store decimal point value in another type we can use single character we can store a complete sentence like hello world we can store false and true in a different variable hmm. let me give you an example we can store false in integer because integer or int is an integer it should store an integer value then how i can store false value like sometimes we need true and false value like or sometimes we need to store a character like uh, i want to store a then how should i store a can i store a in int no it is not the right type for storing a because it is a single character and int is storing number value then for storing different types of data we have different type variables in c plus plus let's talk about those variable types like i we have int to store integer whole numbers without decimal like we can store 123 or minus 123 it means we can store whole numbers in int except decimal numbers like we can't store 1.2 because this is decimal and as we know we cannot store decimal in integer we have double double value stores floating point numbers with decimals such as 19.99 or minus 19.99 or like we can store this value here or any other value which has decimal pointing which has decimals and again we are talking about char store single characters such as a or b char values are surrounded by single cards its role in c plus plus that when we are going to store char value in any variable we have to surround that by single chord. Let's do that. This is our char. I mean, like C is equal to C. The store stored value should be surrounded by single chords. It's role. If we don't do that, then we will have error. Let's come and talk about string. String or stores text that much simple, such as storing hello world, like or storing the name, storing anything which is complete text or which is more than one character. We can store that in string. And remember, string value should be surrounded by double quotes. As we know, when we were printing hello world, we were surrounded. We were writing that inside double quotes. This is rule. For character or for char value, we have to surround that by single. And for string value or for text value, we have to surround it by double quote. And again, as we know here, uh, we sometimes we need to store false and true we will use false and true value too much in our games we need this value then we cannot store this in these types for that we have a type which is called bool or boolean stores the value with two states true or false true is one and false is zero it means if i say that ball uh, some value like a is equal to zero then it means that a is equal to false because zero is the value of false or sometimes if i tell the program that ball b is equal to one it says that the value of ball is true we can store error 
true or false or we can store zero and one that's our choice we can do any one of them it's time for variable declaration how to declare a variable it's too much easy c++ is a strongly typed language and required very variables to be declared with its type before its first use as we know about that before we use a variable we have to declare that variable but how to declare a variable why to declare a variable and what is the declaration of variable let's talk about this declaring a variable informs the compiler the size to reserve in memory for the variable and how to interpret its value what does it mean as we know this is our memory location like this this is our memory and all of them are memory location and every memory location has its own address like we will give 001002003 this is our memory and this is the name of memory locations when we are going to declare a variable like i'm telling compiler int H. Here we are telling compiler that H is a variable of type int. What does it mean? It means that we are going to inform compiler about the size of our variable. It means our variable will be an int value. And what is the size of int? Size of int is 4 bytes. If you don't know how to find the size of variables, you can search in Google. Here you can see the list of sizes variable types in C++. int is 4 bytes, float is also 4 bytes, double is 8 bytes, boolean is 1 byte and char is also 1 byte. We can find the list of all variable types in Google, you can search that. Now we know that the size of int is 4 bytes, then it means when we are telling to program that our age is int it means that our age is 4 bytes it means that program will reserve these 4 bytes of memory location for age and its name is age now i'm coming again and telling to program that age is equal to 20 directly program will store this 20 in these 4 bytes it will be stored in these four bytes because an int value is four bytes in program if i come and declare a char value a then compiler will reserve one byte of memory location for a if i store any character like c in a then compiler will store this c here in this one reserved byte by this way if i declare any type of variable compiler would reserve that uh, that much size of memory for that like bool is it true or false i'm telling that then compiler will reserve this one byte of memory location for is it a uh, variable if i go to store is it is equal to true then compiler will store this true here in this uh, one byte now we know about uh, uh, why should we declare a variable before using it because when we declare a variable it means that we are giving information to our program that this uh, a variable shouldn't have this uh, much size and it stored this type of value then in next time when we are using it program already know about that and it directly stores that value inside that uh, variable or it takes that value from that variable again remember that we have to declare a variable before using it Syntax for declaring a variable is too much easy. First, we have to write data type and variable name. For example, we are going to write int like age. We are going to write data type 
char one letter right float float number and like that once we declare the variable like h one letter and floating can be used within the rest of their scope in the program what does we mean by scope we already know about the scope like when we are going to write int this is our main function and our main function starts from here and it ends here this is the scope area for a variable if i write int here h this h is this h can be used in the rest of this scope like i can use it here i can use it here any place i want in this scope i can use this h it means this age is limited to this scope area if I have another function or another scope area below here then if I use age compiler will not understand it because our age is declared in this scope not in this scope then for every scope we have to declare its own value we have a global value as well and we will talk about global values in next lectures for this lecture these values are local values which is limited to their scope naming roles for variables when we are going to give a name to a variable it have its own roles and we should follow those roles if we do a mistake or if we don't follow the naming rules for variable then we will have errors in our program let's talk about it name can contain letters digits and underscores we know about that names can begin with a letter or an underscore it means that we cannot start the name of a variable with an digit like if we are writing int h it is correct name if i write int to h it is wrong because we cannot start our variable name with number or if i write int underscore h this is also right because we can start we can begin the name of a variable with underscore or with a letter names are case sensitive it means that my verb with uh, capital v is different with my verb with small v it is name sensitive like if you write age like this I write age like this these two age are not equal this is a different age this is a different age names cannot contain white space or special characters like these characters or white space reserved keywords cannot be used as variable name such as int is a reserved keyword we cannot use it as variable name or we can see return is a reserved keyword or char is a reserve keyword bowl is a reserve keyword we cannot use these names as our variable names because these uh, keywords are reserved by c plus plus and it is not allowed to use as variable names let's do this in visual studio code first of all let's declare a variable for declaring a variable we are going to write variable type like I want to write char variable name single character this is our variable and it is working because we are following the C++ rules for our variable but if I use a single char 2 again it's right it will work and there will not be an error in our program as you can see there is no error because it's working correctly we can use later but if I start it with single char 2 if I start it with two single char 2 this time it will be wrong as you can see it changed its color and it will not work if I run my program then I will have error here because we cannot start a variable name with a digit let's remove it from here and we can start it with underscore it's correct 
if I am going to run my program now, it will work because this time I started my variable name it underscore and it is allowed. Let's store a value in our variable. That is too much easy or it is called variable initialization. We are going to initialize our variable after declaring it. Or it is called assigning a value to a variable as well. We have two types of variable initialization. C++ style initialization and C style initialization. We have syntax for it. In C++ style initialization, first we have to declare our variable variable type and variable name and again we can initialize our value inside curly brackets for example int h20 int is variable type h is the name of variable and 20 is the value stored in h or we can see char one letter and c inside curly bracket it means that we are going to store c in one letter variable which is type char float float number and 3.14 is the value which we want to store in float value and it should be in curly brackets c++ style initialization is that much easy after the name of variable we should write the value of variable inside curly brackets and now let's come to C style initialization syntax. Here also, first we have to declare our variable, variable type, variable name, which is the syntax for uh, declaring variable. And again, we are going to use equal operator and the value we want to assign there. Or this type of initialization is called assigning value to the variable. For example, int variable type, h is variable name, and this is variable declaration. We are going to use equal operator and at the last we are going to use the value we want to store at h this is c++ style initialization or we can call assigning value to the variable now the value of h is 20 value of one letter is c and the value of float number is 3.4 now let's do it in visual studio code this is my int value which is h this is my char value, one letter. This is my float value, float num. This is my ball value, is true. I declared these variables. Now I want to initialize them in a C++ style. In C++ style, I'm going to initialize them by writing their value inside curly brackets like 20 char C floatnum 3.14 and is it true? True. This type of initialization is called C++ style initialization. In this style, it is like this. The value of age is 20, the value of one letter is C, the value of float num is 3.14, and the value of is true is true. And now, let's check it, if it's working or not. Let me save and run my program. As you can see, we don't have an error and we initialized our values correctly. Let us let me print all these values. I will print them by std cout h space one later space Float num space is true. Now let's run our program and see what's happening here. As you can see, the value of h is 20, the value of h is 20, the value of one letter is c, one letter is here, and its value is c. And the value of float num is 3.14.
float num it is 3.14 and the value of bowl is is true is true and as we know the true means one and it is printed one here now we know how to initialize variables in c++ style we can initialize variables in c style as well let me initialize them in c style This is initializing by C style and it has the same result. Let me run this program. Yes, it has the same result 20C 3.14 1, which is the value of that. Or this type of initialization is also called assigning value to this. I printed this value here first time, as you can see. Again, I want to change the value of every variable here and print it again. Let's do that. I want to tell age is equal to 30 this time. One letter is equal to D. Float num is equal. Float num is equal to 20.4. true is equal to false this time let me copy this code again and paste it here twice I want to print my uh, values and here I'm going to add a new line by writing end or end line now let me run my program here now let's talk about our program here we declared our variables here this is the declaration of our variables this is the initialization of our variables and here we are going to print our variables and this is the result of our variable 20 h is 20 c one letter is C 3.14 float num is 3.14 and one yeah our ball value is true or it means one again we are coming here and we are changing our value because we know that uh, variable can be changed we can change variable here I am changing the value of, of my variable the new value of each is 30 again I am printing age here and the new value of age is 30 the new value of one letter is D it is D the new value of load num is 25 4 25 4 and the new value of is true or boolean is false which means zero what does we mean by this let me tell you this is our memory location This is our memory and this is the location of our memory like 001, 002, 003, 004. This is our memory lo locations and this is the address of our memory locations. Now when we are declaring a variable it means we are telling compiler that mm, reserve a memory location for us with the name of H. It is reserving a memory location for us. Its name is H. It's here. And again, char value it's for, is one letter from here. Float value or float number. Again, uh, program is coming and it is reserving a value for us with the name of float num and is true it's coming to reserve a memory location for us and it is called is true like this now we are going to assign a value into our variable or initialize it i'm coming here and telling compiler that h is equal to 20 and program is coming to its memory location and write 
20 here. Our one liter is C. Our float number is 3.14. Our is true value is true. Now we are going to print our value. For printing it, uh, we are going to tell compiler that C out H. What is H? H is a memory location and it takes value from here. Value stored H in H is 20 and it returns back 20. H is printing 20. One letter. What is one letter? One letter is here and its memory location is here. Value stored in one letter is C and it's returning C and printing C for us. Float number, float number is 3 for 14 and is true, its value is true or 0. Now it's printing this value for us here which is stored in these memory locations. This time we are telling our program that in memory location of H store 30. Program is coming and checking here that uh, H is a memory location or is a variable and its value is 20. But this time we are going to assign 30 to it. Then what does the program do? It is removing the old value from here and assigning new value here in this memory location which is 30. In one letter, do the same thing. It is removing C from here and storing D here. It's removing 3.14 from here and storing 25.4. It is removing true from here and storing false here. Now this time when we are coming here and printing it again by using C out, we are going to print H. This time when program is checking in H memory location, it is 30 and it is printing 30 for us. This time in memory location of one letter, it is D and it is printing D for us. And for float number, it is 20.4 and it is printing 20.4 for us. And at the last, is true, the value of is true is false this time and it is printing zero for us. This is how variable is working and how we can print that variable, how can we change them, how can we initialize them and how can we assign new value into the variable. Let's do a test program using variables in Visual Studio Code. Let's declare some variables, float, wave and initialize it to zero. Float again, rectangle length, rectangle length and initialize it as zero as well. Now let's ask user for inputting these values. We declared our variables, we initialized it to zero and asking from the user for the length and width of the rectangle by using cn and now we are going to see out the area of rectangle. To do that, This is a simple test program using variables. Let's compile it. Now program is asking for the length and width of the rectangle. I want to enter 5 and 8.3. If I enter our rectangle area is 41.5. Let's explain it a little bit. First, we are going to declare our variables and initialize it to zero. Initializing a variable to zero is better than not initializing it. Then, now we are going to initialize it to zero, both of them. 
and after that we are asking for the length and width of the rectangle from the user user should input rectangle length and width when user is inputting something anything he want in this example we are in inputting 5 and 8.3 and again we are going to give the area of the rectangle to the user for that see out rectangle area is rectangle length multiplied by rectangle width and we have our output here that is that much easy uh, if we draw its memory location first of all this is our memory and uh, by using this this is our memory locations here and first of all we initialize them to zero here and again when user is inputting anything if he input anything like if he input 8 and here he will input 5.3 then uh, when we are going to output them uh, program will multiply 8 by 3 and it will equal any value given will be printed into the console we know about variables and it is time to talk about constants. Constants are similar to variables but there is only one difference between them. The only difference between them is the value of variable is changeable but the value of a constant is not changeable. It means we cannot change the value of constants once we declare and initialize it. Let's know about the syntax for declaring and initializing constants. To declare a constant we need to write const keyword and data type like we were writing for a variable and constant name and the value for constant const keyword is for declaring constant it is required at the beginning if you don't write const at the beginning of uh, our constant type then it will be variable I mean if we don't write const keyword uh, before data type then that value is changeable and it means that is variable but if we write const keyword then that will be constant and will not be changeable data type is like int char float and many more as it was in variables constant name is the name of a constant like variable has a name and value this is the value of constant and it will never change what do we mean by that for example if we declare a constant with the name of pi and we give it a value uh, 3.14 then this value will not be changeable during the program because this is the constant value and we should not change this value sometimes we need a value in our program that we should not change it then if we declare a value as a variable then variable is changeable during program sometimes maybe you will change it by mistake then it will be a problem for you but if you declare a value as constant then it will not be changeable if you change it uh, inside the program by mistake or someone else change it then compiler will give an error and will tell you that this value is not changeable because that is constant Let's talk about constant in Visual Studio Code. First, I want to write const keyword and float for data type. And let me give it a name as pi and its value is 3.14. Now this value is not changeable. I want to I want to print this value. I want to print this value uh, let me save it and run the program as you can see here pi value is 3.14 now let me change the value pi is equal to 14.3 now let me save the program and run it we will see what's happening now Now as you can see here in function main 
we have error. The, the error is assigning a read on the variable pi. Compiler says you're going to assign a value for read and the variable r which is constant, which is not changeable. You want to change a value which is not changeable. This is error. We are not allowed to change the value of pi because it is a constant or const keyword is there. But if I delete the const keyword and save the program, now if I run it, yeah, program is going to run correctly because now this is not constant. Now this is a variable and it is changeable. But if you write const, remember that if you want to declare a constant, then const keyword is required before data type. Now let's run it. And again, we have the same error. For fixing this error, we have to delete this line because we can't assign new value to the constant. Now, if you run the program, it will work correctly. Now it's time to talk about arrays. Before talking about arrays, let me give me an example. For example, sometimes you have to declare 100 variables from the same type. Like you have 100 students and you want to save their role numbers or names or any other information then you have to declare 100 integer type variables that's not an easy job because you're going to uh, declare variable 1 2 3 4 till 100 sometimes maybe you need thousand thousands 10,000 or more than that then for solving this problem we have arrays how to solve this problem let me declare one integer like num1 num2 num3 till num99 this is a huge number of uh, variables from the same data type and declaring them takes long time initializing them also takes long time then how to declare hundreds or even thousands of variables of same data type just in one line of code let's do that for doing that we have arrays now let's talk about arrays little bit C++ provide a data structure, the array, which stores fixed size sequential collection of elements of the same data type. The important thing here is same data type. An array is used to store collection of data, but it is often more useful to think of an array as a collection of variables of the same data type. And instead of declaring individual variables such as like you saw num1, num2, num3 like that, we have to declare arrays from that data type. Arrays are same to variables which have uh, memory locations and we can store data in those memory locations. It is time to talk about declaring arrays. Then how can we declare array? To declare array in C++, we have to follow these rules. First, we can write data type and array name and the size of array. This is called a single dimensional array. Now let's declare a variable of type double with the name of balance, which should have 11 elements remember that uh, array element starts from zero and it is going like that if we want to declare 10 elements then we have to write 9 because it starts from 0 1 2 3 till 9 it will become 10 but as in this example if you want 11 elements then we have to write 10 here Let's do this in Visual Studio Code. This is our program and here I want to declare our first array. I want its data type to be double and its name balance. Should 
should be 11 elements when I'm writing 10 it means I want 11 elements because it starts from 0 this is our first array declared in C++ program we can initialize it and we can use it but before using it we have to initialize it we have to store a data in this one now we know about arrays and its declaration it's time to know about the initialization of arrays we can initialize array elements most commonly for beginners by two ways in single statement to initialize it in single statement we have to write data type array name and array size it's the declaration structure and for initialization we have to write its values inside curly brackets and separate them by comma like value of element 1 value of element 2 and many more for example we want to declare an array of char like English vowel letters it should be 4 because we want 5 elements and it starts from 0 value of element 0 is a element 1 is e element 2 is i and 3 is o and 4 is you. This is the method of initialization arrays in single statement. Now let's talk about elements one by one. How can we initialize the elements of an array one by one? For doing that, we have to use this method. Data type, array name and size of array. This is the declaration and to initialize it, we are going to write array name index or the number of element and value of element for example declaring char the same array english vowel letters at zero is a and like that for example here we are going to initialize uh, an array of integer type its name is array and its size is five elements or means six elements because it starts from zero and to initialize it in a single statement uh, i'm writing it in curly brackets like one two three four five and six but if i want to initialize it one by one i am going to i'm going to write array name and the index or array element at zero is equal to one array element at one is equal to two array element two is equal to three and like this remember that these two methods are same there is no difference here it is six elements and at zero it's one at zero it's one at one it's two at one it's two it's same there is no difference to initialize by this way or initialize by this way but we can assign values also by this way as we know that sometimes we only need to assign one value or sometimes we need to assign value only to element fourth i want to change this five then i will tell array at element 4 is equal to 9 now by this way one by one we can change any value of array we can change it but if we want to initialize it in this way or in single statement we have to write values for all the elements then let's do it in visual studio code we already declared an array here with the data type of double and its name is balance it has 10 elements let's initialize it to initialize it i'm gonna write its values inside curly brackets one two three four there's 10 elements now i initialized my array and i want to see i want to print it The value of array element 0 is balance at 0. 
let's print it and see what's happening in our terminal as you can see the value of array at element 0 is 1 the value of array at element 0 is 1 because this is element 0 and its value is 1 remember again that array's element starts from 0 1 2 3 4 5 like by this way we can uh, if I access the value of array 7 then it will give me 6 because it's 6 here in uh, array element 7 because it starts from 0 and our numbers are started from 1 we can store any data any numbers here or we can store names but for names we have to declare array from type string because we already know about that that string type is using for text if you want to use um, if you want to store characters we have to declare a variable from type char and many more now again let's initialize our values one by one to do so I want to come here and write balance at 0 is equal to 10.5 balance at 5 is equal to let me 15 and balance and 9 is equal to 25.3 now I want to print all these values here at 5 now let me explain you what's happening here first we declared our array of type double with the name of balance and it has uh, 10 elements here and we initialize it in single statement we stored 1 2 3 4 5 till 10 here in this array and now we are going to print uh, element 0 axis by this way and element 5 axis by this way and element 9 the value of element 0 is 1, the value of element 5 is 6, and the value of element 9 is 10. Because we know 1, it is 0, it is 1, it is 2, it's 3, it's 4, it's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The value of element 9 is 10. Then it will print 10 for us. This will print 6 for us. And 0 will print one for us but here we are going to change the values because this array is uh, a variable and it's changeable we can change the value of our array as well we are going to change the value of 0 now its new value is 10 and the value of 5 is also 15 and the value of 9 is 20 this time it will print 10.4 15.3 and 25.3 first it will print these values for us and again it will print these values for us let's check it as you can see all the values printed in single line because we need to add end line here to do so Now let's run it. As you can see here, 
the value of element 0 is 1 the value of element 5 is 6 and the value of element 9 is 10 it's correct as we expected and again the value of element 0 is 10 because we updated its value here the value of element 5 is 15 and the value of element 9 is 20.3 it's like that we updated and we changed its value this type of initialization is called one by one and this type of initialization is called single line or single statement initialization by this way we have to assign all the values of elements but in this way we can initialize any element we want this is one by one and we can choose any element we want from the array accessing the elements of an array it's too much easy and i think we already know about that but let's talk about it a little bit more to access a value from inside the array it is so too much easy because we can access the value from inside the array you know, like we were initializing it one by one we can access an element from inside the array just by writing its index number inside the brackets and we will be able to access it let's do this example inside visual studio code this is our old example I want to delete it let me declare an array from type char and its name should be English vowel letters five elements and let's initialize it just a e I like this now let's access its element and let's print it to do so let's write std see out english vowel letter at zero and let's give a comma English vowel letters at one again let's print a comment space English vowel letters at two let's print comment space English vowel letters at three common space English vowel letters at four and I think that's that's the end let's end our statement by semicolon now as you can see this is our code and we are going to print it but let me do it like this that it will be, be easy understandable uh, let's run our program and we will check it now as you can see we are going to print our five elements from our uh, array accessing it is too much easy we are just writing the index number of our array inside the brackets after the name of array and by that way we are going to print it we can change its value and we can do anything we want an array expressions and statements in c plus plus first let's talk about expressions what is an expression an expression is a combination of operators, constants, and variables. And expressions may consist of one or more operands and zero or more operators to produce a value. That much easy. Like this is an expression, this is an expression, this is also all of them are one expression. But we have different types of expressions constant expressions which have constant value like 5 
15 and the, all of them are constant values integral expressions which have uh, in, uh, integer values like x or x multiplied by y but both of them are variables of integer type that's why it is integral expressions boolean expressions are those expressions which return true or false value like this here it will return true or false value if x is equal or smaller than y then this uh, uh, expression will return true if it's not like that it will return false in this expression if x plus y is greater than 2 uh, this will return true otherwise it will return false this expression is boolean expression because it is returning true or false value logical expressions which has only logical operations like uh, um, x is greater than y and x is equal to 10 or if x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 5 this is a logical operation because uh, here is logic if this and this is true here is logic and here is if it is true it will return true or otherwise it will return false it is boolean and it is logical expressions and at the very end we have pointer expressions pointer expressions produce address values we will talk about pointers in next lecture it is very important topic in c plus plus now let's talk about statements a statement is a complete line of code that performs some action usually terminated with a semicolon we already know about this rule of c++ we should end every statement in c++ by semicolon types of statements we have different types of statements like this is declaration statement because we are going to declare a variable this is assignment statement because we are going to assign 30 to x and it is uh, expression statement because uh, it consists of an expression and this is null statement because we don't have any code here but at the very end we have if statement because here is if if x is greater than y see out x is greater than y this is called if statement because here is if now let's talk about this in visual studio code first let me write some expressions if i write 10 this is this is constant this is constant expression because 10 is a constant and it is a constant expression if i write int y and x y is equal to 10 and x is equal to 20 y is equal to x plus y if y is greater than x now this is a very simple code and here we are going to talk about some expressions and statements first of all this is a constant expression and this is a complete statement it's called declaration statement and here we have assignment statement but x plus y is integral expression and here we have if statement but if x is greater than y this is a boolean expression we can see that uh, inside a statement there may be uh, different expressions like it is an expression but this complete is a statement uh, an if statement and here we have another statement and we have different kinds of statements, expressions, and many more. I think operators are very important topic in C++. Because we use operators everywhere and it do everything for us. Let's talk about operators. An operator is a symbol that tells the compiler to perform specific mathematical or logical manipulations. C++ is rich in built-in operations and build the following type of operators let's talk about that we have assignment operators to assign value to a variable arithmetic operators like plus minus 
many more increment and decrement operators we will talk about them relational operator and logical operators let's start it with assignment operators assignment operators are used to assign value to a variable hmm, that's much easy the left side operand of the assignment operator is a variable and right side operand of the assignment operator is value like if i say a is equal to 12 this is a variable which is in left side and this is value which is in right side it means we are going to assign this from right side to left side in variable we will assign two in a variable and this is the operator these two are operands the value on the right side must be the same data type of the variable on the left side otherwise the compiler will write an error for example if we write int a if we say a is equal to 12.3 this time we will have error because this is 12.3 is float value it, it has uh, decimal points but a is integer and that's not possible to store float value in uh, uh, integer to fix this error we should store a value at the same data type which a variable has this variable is from data type int it means it will store integer value if i store 12 in this then this will be correct because a is an integer variable and 12 is an integer we can store 12 in a this is right like a is equal to 12 a is an integer variable and we store 12 to a 12 is an integer and it can be stored in integer variable which is a different assignment operators are we have different types of assignment operators like this is simple assignment operator like we already used it it uh, stores value from the right side into the variable into the left side plus equal operator adds variable value to the value on the right side and then stores result back in the variable on the left side like we have if I say a plus equal to b, it means that a is equal to a plus b. It adds a value to b and the result saves back in a, like in this way. Or if I say minus equal, it means that a minus equal to b can be written as a is equal to a minus b. It means uh, first compiler will minus b value from a and it will store the result in a like that multiply equal is like this and division equal can be written like this now let's talk about arithmetic operators arithmetic operators are used to perform arithmetic operations on variable and data like we have a plus b plus is an arithmetic operator is used to add two variables and we have different types of arithmetic operators you already know about that plus minus multiplication and division and also we have a remainder after division this remainder is very important what does it mean if i write a division b what does it mean i mean Divide the value of a by b and uh, give me the remainder. Let's uh, say that the value of a is 10. Remainder, the value of b is 3. Then when we divide 10 by 3, we will uh, 3 to 3 is 9. We have one remainder. This will equal to 1. If I tell 11 reminder 3 is equal to 2, 12 reminder 3 is equal to 0. Because if I mm, because if I divide 12 and 3, then there will be no remind. The remainder will be 0. 
if I divide 11 by 3, the remainder will, will be 2. If I divide 10 by 3, then the remainder will be 1, like that. If I divide 9 by 2, the remainder will be 1. But if I divide 10 remainder 2, the remainder will be 0, because I can divide 10 and 2, it will be sufficient for it. Now let's talk about increment and decrement operators. C++ also provide increment and decrement operators to increase or decrease a value by one. Increment operator plus 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 is increment operator and minus minus is decrement operator. Plus plus means to increase value by one and minus minus means to decrease value by one. What do I mean? If I write a plus plus it means that a is equal to a plus one i mean that uh, uh, plus one to a and store the result back in a or a minus minus means a is equal to a minus one store the value of a minus one back in a we are using increment and decrement operators most in loop or we can see in while and for loops we will talk about them just in next lectures now let's come and talk about relational operators we have different types of relational operator it is used to check the relationship between two operands relational operators return true one or false means zero that we can use for example if e is greater than b relational operator and checks if e is greater than b we have different types of relational operators a equal equal b means if e is equal to b remember that in c++ if we are checking that if e is equal to b we can check it like this with a single uh, equation because it means single equal operator means that assign value from right side into the left side if i write it like this the compiler says that you want to store the value of e in variable b but i don't mean that if I want to tell compiler that I want to check if E is equal to B, then I have to write equal operator two times. This means that if E is equal to B or not. We have not equal operator, we have greater operator, we have less than operator, and we have greater and equal operator. Finally, we have less than and equal operator. If I write a is less than or equal to b, now compiler will check if e is less than b or if e is equal to b, then it will return true. If it is not like that, then it will return false because if e is greater than b, then it will return false. This is the relational operator. It checks for relationship between two operators like if it is equal to each other if it is not equal to each other if it is greater than another if it is lesser than other if it is equal or greater than other or if it is less than other or equal with that now finally let's talk about logical operators what is logical operators logical operators are used to check whether an expression is true or false if the expression is true it returns one Whereas if the expression is false, then it will return zero or false. Everywhere one means true and zero means false. Now let's uh, check this example. If E is greater than B and E is equal to C, this will return one value or true or false. If E is equal to b and this means and e is equal to c that time it will return true 
if it is not like that here if this or this expression is false then this complete expression will be false let me talk about this little bit more we have three types of logical operators and or not and or not first of all let's talk about and which is this operator then and means if we have two expressions like uh, e if e is equal to b and e is greater than 10 if we have this type of expressions what does it means this means if this expression and this expression is true if this is true and this is true then the result will be true but if this is true uh, and this is false then the result will be false because we says this and this should be true this and should this should be true if both of them are true then the result will be true if one of them or both of them are false then the result will be false now if we are talking about our operator or is different or is different in R if this expression and this expression are true if this is true this is false then the result will be true because one of them is true we are telling compiler if these or this one of them are true then the result will be true and finally let's talk about not not means if something is true for example if a is equal to b if it is equal to b if this is true then return false if this one is true this expression is true then return false but if this uh, expression is false then return true because not means if something is true then uh, i want false if something is false then i want true then sometimes we need this kind of logical operators now let's talk about these operators in visual studio code as you can see this is assignment operator and first i uh, declared and initialized my variables here and let's check if it's working or not here as you can see the value of a is 10 and the value of b is 15 i just printed a and b into the terminal it's working correctly because this this is initialized now now i want to uh, remove the command from these lines and i want to declare and i want to assign values into this this is assignment operator and this now let me save my program and compile this again i assigned 20 to a and plus 15 to b my new value of uh, b is uh, my new value of a is 20 and new value of b is 30 because uh first value of b was 15 and 15 plus 15 is 30. this is assignment plus assignment operator it means that b is equal to b plus 15. the value of b is 15 15 plus 15 is equal to 30 then in this uh, example b is equal to 30 as you can see it here and here again we are going to print our a and b values these are assignment operators we have this assignment operator we have plus assignment operator we have minus assignment operator and multiplication assignment operator division assignment operator and many more let's remove comment from these as well and uh, let's run it 
as you can see here first volume of a was 10 and b was uh, 15 and second volume of a was 20 and for b is 30 because 15 is here 15 is there and again i want to assign new value to a a minus uh, b a minus b is equal to 10 minus 10 because the value of uh, a is uh, 20 and the value of b is 30 if i say a is equal to a minus b it means that a is equal to 20 minus 30 because the value of b is 30 this time and the value of a is 20 if i say that uh, t 20 minus 30 it will be equal to minus 10 and as we can see our result is minus 10 here and the value of b is b because it remains at its time and i had not updated that value now let's talk about arithmetic operators let's run our program now let's talk about it a little bit as you can see i am telling compiler that a is equal to 15 plus b the value of b is 30 and 30 plus 15 is equal to 45 then a is equal to 45 yes we have the value of a 45 and again i'm telling to compiler that b is equal to b minus e what does it mean b is equal to b which value is 30 minus e which value is 45 and b is equal to minus 15 yes we have the value of a as minus 15 and again here we're talking about reminder I declared a new variable with c and its type is integer. I'm telling compiler that c is equal to 20 divided by 3 and give me its reminder. If we divide 20 by 3, it will be 6, but we have to reminder. Then this uh, operator means reminder. If we divide 20 by 3, give me the reminder. The reminder is 2. Yes, we are printed 2 here. Our C value is 2 because if we divide 20 by 3, its reminder will, will be 2. Now let's talk about increment and decrement. Let's print our value. A++ plus plus means A is equal to A plus 1. Old value of A was 45 plus 1 it will be equal to 46 yes we have the value of 46 here and b minus minus or decrement b by 1 means that b is equal to b minus 1 it means that the value of b was minus 15 minus 15 minus 1 is equal to minus 16 yes our new value is minus 16 and it's time for relational operators what are relational operators relational operators are using to show the relationship between two operands let's talk about these little bit but before talking about them let's compile our program first this is a condition if e is greater than b then print this statement if it is not like that then don't print it or if e is equal to b then print this statement if it is not like that then don't print it if e is smaller than b then print this statement if it is false then don't print it let's talk about it the value of e is 46 and the value of b is minus 16 46 is greater than minus 16. Yes, this is true. Then compiler will print this. And as we can see here, E is greater than B. Yes, compiler printed it. And this is the true. This returns true. This is the relational operator. This shows that if this operator is smaller than this, or if this operator is greater than this, that time this, uh, expression will return true otherwise it will return false now let's talk about this 
if e is equal to b this operator is using to show that if these two operands are equal to each other then i am telling compiler that print this statement e is 46 and b is minus 16 no it's not true because 46 is not equal to minus 16 this time it returns false and it means that compiler should not print this statement and we can't see this statement here again at last we have a smaller operator here we are telling compiler that if e is smaller than b then print this uh, statement it means that if 46 is if 46 is smaller then minus 16 then print it but it's not true it is false where while it's false then compiler should not print this statement and yes compiler did not print it that statement and now let's talk about logical operators we have logical operators here this time in logical operators we are going to tell compiler if this expression and this expression is true then do this for us if it's not true or if one of them are not true or if both of them are not true then do, don't do this and operators means that both expressions in the right hand and and the left hand should be true if one of them or both of them are false then it will not work now let's see a is greater than 10 yes 46 is greater than 10 and uh, e is uh, smaller than 100 yes 46 is smaller than 100 then this exp mm, statement should be printed yes this statement is printed here e is greater than 10 and smaller than 100 yes it's printed there and again let's check this one if e is smaller than b or if e is greater than 20 or operator means that if one of these expressions is true if right hand one is true or if this one is true then this expression will be printed it means that if uh, e is greater than b which is true or if b is greater than 20 it's false this one is false and this one is true but we are using our operator then it will be printed because one of them is true then uh, it will return true and we have to print this one e is greater e is greater than b or b is greater than 20 yes it is printed into the terminal if you if there was and then this time you, it will not be printed because one is true and one is not true if both are in and operator both of them should be true in our operator if one of them is true then it will be true if both of them is true then again it will be true but if both of them are false then the result will be false let's talk about not operator not operator means that uh, the return should be false what do you mean by that if e is not equal to b then print this one or if e is equal to b then don't print it if this is true then return false or if this is false then return true while this is false because e is not equal to b then it will be printed because it is false and it will return true for if it will be printed but if uh, e was equal to b then uh, this expression will be true but the return value to if statement will be false because not means that some if something is true then return false if something is false then return true we already talked about that then compiler should print this one as well because e is not equal to b yes e is not equal to b it's printed into the terminal as well as you can see these are all logical operators and is the most important operators in c programming we are going to use them in game development as well you have to practice all of them a lot because arithmetic operator assignment operator logical operator relational operators all of them are so much important and we will use them in our game development if else statements now let's talk about if 
if something is true then do this thing if it is not true then do that thing or if this is true then do this else do that like these things if my name and password is correct then let me go and log into something if my password or my name is wrong then don't let me to go there that's talking with computer you're giving a condition to computer that if something is true then do this thing but if it's not true do not do that or do something else let's talk about if first we use if to specify a block of code to be executed if a specific condition is true if this expression is true execute this statement if it's not true then don't execute it if the condition in the parenthesis is true then execute the statement in curly brackets but if the condition in parenthesis is false then skip the condition in curly brackets let's talk about it here if this is our program and it is going here now computer is coming here and it is checking for this expression we already know about relational operators if num is greater than 7 if it is true then do this if it is not true then go and execute what is below that or i mean if uh, num is greater than 7 then do this or increment num by one if it's not like that then skip this block of code and go execute what is else down let's talk about else sometimes you're telling computer we use else if if expression is not true what do you mean by that if this expression is true then execute this block of code but if it's not true then execute this block of code it means if this expression is true then execute this block of code and skip this block of code but if this execute but if this expression is not true then skip this block of code but execute this block of code else means that if number is greater than 7 if it is true then increment num by 1 but if it is not true, if it is false, then assign 7 to the number and go where else is down. If the condition in parentheses is true, then execute the statement in black here. But if the condition in parentheses here is not true, if it is false, then execute the statement too, which is here. Or if it is not true, if it is false, then do this. Or do this all of them are the same and at the very end let's talk about else if what is else if we're telling computer that if the if expression is not true then what to if expression one is true then execute this one and skip all this else if and else and go down but if this one is not true, then don't execute this one. Go check for expression 2. If expression 2 is true, then execute statement 2 and skip else statement 3. But if this is also not true, then go and print else. Let's talk about this. This is the start of our program and this is what is next after if our if statement. If health is equal to zero, then call the function of die. It means that if health is zero, then character should be killed. Like this. Then if this one is true, then kill character and go down what is next. Go down what is next. But if it is not true, if health is not equal to zero then go and check if health is equal to 100 or not if health is equal to 100 or not if this is true then execute this statement and go down skip this statement but if this one is not true and this one is not true means that here if health is 
not equal to 0 and if health is not equal to 100 then go and add health to the health bar and go next now let's talk about if else in visual studio code first of all i want to declare a variable which is float the name of health and it is equal to 50.0 now i'm telling compiler if health is equal to zero then print character is died like this something else if health is equal to 100 then health is full else print this one health is health and health plus equal to 20 or 30 and Your new health is health. Now let's run this program and check how is it work. Now it says that health is 50. Okay, and there is one mistake. Uh, we should solve that. I mean, we should add end line here. And now let's run it. Now let's say health is 50, new health is 80. What does it mean? We declared our health and it is 50. And we're mm, telling computer that if health is zero, then compile this statement. Is health zero? No, it's 50. Then program is going to skip this part, this block of code from here to here, because this is not true. And it is coming here and checking it that. Is health equal to 100? No, it is not equal to 100. Because it is 50, then it is not true as well. Then compiler is going to skip this block of code as well. Because it's not true, the condition in parentheses is not true, then it will be skipped by the compiler and at the end it will come to else because of this these two expressions are false then compiler is going to execute the last one else if first two or three or four or one any uh, if we have if we have any statements of if in above if one of them is true then else will not be executed but if all of them is false then else will be executed 100 percent now first one is false second one is false then compiler is going to execute else 100 percent it will execute it because all of them are false now first it is going to print our current health which is 50 and it is telling us health is 50 and again it is and again we are going to add 30 to our health bar and at last we are going to print our new health again which is 80 because 50 plus 30 is equal to 80 that's right then it says your new health is 80 yeah that's right now let's talk about uh, let's do this uh, if uh, your health is equal or greater than 100 now if i come here and write here um, 500 yeah, 
Now if you run our program, we can see it is printed that health is full. Why our health is full? Because it is 500. When compiler is coming here and it checks if health is equal to zero, no, it's not equal to zero. Then this block of code is skipped by the compiler and it's coming to uh, else if is health is greater than or equal to 100 yes it is because 500 is greater than 100 then this statement is printed health is full but why this statement is not printed because one of the expressions of if statement above the else is true then uh, else will not be executed if we have if and 100 times else if um, uh, below that if one expression of them is true then else will not be executed but if all of them are false then else will be executed at the end okay that's right now then now uh, let's make it zero i want to come here and tell the compiler that health is equal to zero then now let's run our program again if i run my program character is died why because our health is equal to zero we're telling computer that if health is equal to zero then print the first one health is equal to zero yes it is zero then first one will be printed second and third one will not be even executed by the compiler if first expression is true and second one is also true then on the first one then on the first one will be executed but second one will be skipped by the compiler because here we're telling if and else if it means that if first expression is false then check this condition but if first one is true then don't check even this one let's check it in second statement i want to tell compiler that if health is smaller than 10 if health is smaller than 10 then uh, execute the second one as well now let's run our program health is zero yes if health is equal to zero then print this one it's okay health is zero then compiler will print this one character is died but let's check here if health is smaller than 10 yeah zero is smaller than 10 this is true as well why this one is not executed health is full why this one is not executed because first one is true one expression is true here and one if is executed then uh, it will not be executed because this is else if but if i remove else from here what will happen if i remove else if this one is true print this one if this one is true then print this one now this time compiler will execute both of them let's talk about that first uh, i want to add one in line here and now let's run our program now character is died and health is full both of them is executed why both of them is executed because we are telling compiler that if health is equal to zero yes health is equal to zero it is zero then this one should be executed it is okay but why this one is executed we are telling compiler that if health is smaller than 10 zero is smaller than 10 it's true as well then compiler is going to execute this one as well let's talk about looping in c what is looping looping executes a statement or a block of statements repeatedly while a specific condition is true for example while this condition is true execute this block of statement repeatedly it means that repeat the execution of these statements until this condition becomes false in this situation compiler will compile the body of loop repeatedly until the condition is true like sometimes program ask user for a specific thing or a specific password like or a specific email name something then 
while he is writing the name wrong or the password wrong then the same code will be executed again and again until he is going to write the password or the name correctly the time you're using while looping or we have different types of looping in c++ programming again looping is using to execute a code or a block of statements repeatedly until a specific condition is becoming false if some condition is true then that block of code will be executed repeatedly let's talk about different types of looping in c++ we have a while loop this loop execute a block of code as long as a specific condition is true check the condition at the beginning of every iteration first it check for its condition if this condition is true then it execute this block of code do while loop do while loop is same as while loop but what is different between while and do while loop this uh, check the condition at the end of every iteration in do while loop first we are executing this block of code first we are going to execute this block of code and again we are checking for a specific condition it means that program will execute this block of code even if the condition is false here first it is going to execute this block of code again it checks for the condition if the condition is true it is going to execute the same block of code again but if the condition is false then it's going to go to the next level but what is for loop sometimes if you know exactly how many times you want to loop through a specific block of code like sometimes i know that i want to print this block of code 10 times or 20 times or 30 times how many times I want to print this block of code if exactly we know about the number of executing our code then we are going to use for loop but if we don't know about how many times we have to print or we have to repeat our code we are going to use while loop we will talk about while loop do while loop and for loop just in next lecture now let's talk about looping in C++ First, let's talk about while loop. What is while loop? While loop executes a block of statements as long as given condition is true. If this condition is true, then this block of statements will be executed repeatedly until this condition is becoming false. While it's false, then program will go to the next code. Let's talk about it. While loop checks for the condition every time. If the condition is true, it's going to execute these statements again. But if the condition is false, it will not execute these statements again. Let's check it in code. This is our main function. We have a variable of type int. Its value is 20. While it is bigger than 10 execute this code c++ program comes here and checks for the condition if a is bigger than 10 is this condition true yes it is true it's going to repeat this code or it is going to execute this code and comes here minus minus a means decrement a by one we already know about minus minus a it means a is equal to a minus 1 this is the decrement operator it decrements a by 1 then again it's coming here and checks for the condition again this time a is 19 because we're going to um, minus 1 from the a again is 19 bigger than 10 yes the condition is true again then while loop execute this block of code again this time again minus minus a means a minus 1 19 minus 1 this time it is 18 is 18 bigger than 10 
Yes, it is bigger than 10. Again, it executes until it becomes smaller or equal to 10. Let's check for the output. First, it is 20. It is going to print A because first value of A is 20. A minus uh, uh, 1, it is 19. 19 is bigger than 10 again and a compiler will execute this code again this time if we print a its volume will be 19 19 is bigger than 10 yes the condition is true again the uh, block of code will be executed again and uh, we will decrement a by 1 again this time it will be 18 a condition is true again it will be repeat until a is 11 until a is 11 well, a is 11 and we decrement a by 1, it will become 10. And we will check for the condition again. Is 10 bigger than 10? No, it's not bigger than 10. It is equal, but we don't have the equal operator here. Then it is, this condition is not true and compiler will not execute this statement again and it will go for the rest code in the program. Let's talk about while looping in Visual Studio Code. This is our program and here let's talk about while loop. Its value is 20. While a is bigger than 10, execute this block of code. Here I want to write std. If I run this code, compiler will execute this block of code 10 times. Let's check it. Yes, as we expected, compiler is going to execute our block of code 10 times. It checks for the condition. Condition is true. It executes this block of code. Decrement A by 1. Check for the condition again. Print the code again, decrement a by 1 again, and every time it's going to print the value of a. We can see first value of a is 20. Again, when we decrement a by 1, its value is 19, 18. Every time you know, we're going to uh, decrement a by 1, as we can see it in output, it is decrementing by 1 until the condition is becoming false like if it is 10 10 is not bigger than 10 this time condition is false and program skips the block of code that's it for while loop sometimes we can run our while loop for unlimited times let's do that if i write here that uh, while a is bigger than 10 and if I come here and I write increment a by 1 if I save this program this time while looping will execute our block of code for unlimited time because it will never become smaller than 10 let's run it as you can see our uh, program is going to run for unlimited times because Every time A is incrementing by 1 and uh, it will never become smaller than 10. This condition will never be true because every time while program reaches to the A, it decrements A by 1. A increment A by 1 means A is equal A plus 1. Every time while we add 1 to a then first it will be 20 21 22 and it will reach it will never stop because it is going to increment by one every time and this condition will never become false every time it will be true and our program will run for unlimited times but we don't want such a program because as you can see our program is running for unlimited times let's ask from the user to write the correct value i want to delete decrement a by one and let's write 
some more code here. The value of A is 20. And we're asking for the user uh, is T D. Enter the value of A. C in. Let me declare one more variable. Uh, int A int B this time. I gonna initialize it to zero. Uh, let's use it say in B and for the condition I want to tell the compiler while a is not equal to B repeat this block of code repeatedly I want to delete this st statement enter the value of a while e is not equal to b then it will be executed again let's run our program this time program is asking the user to write the value of a i want to write 10 it's asking again i want to write 15 it's asking again i want to write 59 it's asking again i want to write 14 it's asking again but if I write the correct value, which is 20, then if I enter it, then program is going to finish. Now let's talk about this little bit. First, while program reads to while looping, it checks for the condition in parentheses. Is A not equal to B? Is this true or not? A is not equal to B. Yes, because the value of A is 20 and the value of B is 0. It's not equal. This is true because A is not equal. Then program will execute this block of statements and ask for the user that entered the value of A. When user entered the value of A, which we are entered 10, program checks again for the condition is a not equal to b this time the value of b is 10 and the value of uh, a is 20 yes it is not equal 10 is not equal to 20 then again program will execute this block of statements user enters 15 this condition is true again because 15 is not equal to 20 and program will execute block of code again until user enters the right value is 20 not equal to 20 is this condition true no it's not true because 20 is equal to 20 while we're writing this operator it means not equal while this is 20 and this is 20 it means these two are equal but the uh, condition is if this condition is if these two values are not equal then the condition will be true while this mm, is equal to each other then the condition becomes false and program stops executing this block of code this is while loop we will talk about do while loop and for loop in next lectures do while loop what is do while loop in the while loop, when compiled reaches to the do while loop, first it executes the block of statements. It will be executed once. If the condition is true or false, the block of statements will be executed and after that, program will check for the condition. If the condition is true, then the program will execute the block of statements again. Again, it will come for the condition. If the condition is true, the statements will be printed again until the condition becomes false. It is same as mm, while because in while it was like that. If the condition is true, 
then the block of statements will be executed repeatedly until the condition becomes false but what is different here in while loop program checks for the condition first if the condition is false then program will not execute the block of code even one time but in do while loop program first uh, execute the block of statements on even if the condition is false the statements will be printed one time after executing these statements program will check for the condition if the condition is true these things will be executed again if the condition is false then program will stop looping let's come to an example here this is our main function here we have a value which is initialized to nothing here do enter a value less than 20 say in value if the value is equal or bigger than 20 program will uh, ask for the user to try again but while value is bigger than 20 or equal to 20 while program reaches to do while looping first this will be executed once program will not check for the condition while it is executing this block of code first time even if it's false or is true program will execute this block of code one time here then if value is bigger than 20 or equal to 20 then this condition will be true program will repeat this again if this is not true i mean if it is smaller than 20 then the condition will be false and program will stop the looping and it will print done let's try this program in visual studio code this is our value we will initialize it to zero here do this body while value is bigger or equal to 20 if this condition is true then the this body will be executed again let's see out if value is bigger than bigger than or equal to 20 This is our program. Let's run it and we will talk about it later. Program asks the user to enter a value less than 20. If I write here 40, then please try again because 40 is not less than 20. Let's write 25. Please try again. Let's try 20 itself. Try again because 20 is not less than 20. We want a value less than 20. Let's write 50 yes done that's the right value now let's talk about it a little bit first of all 
we want to declare an uh, int type value which name is value and initialize it to zero while program reach to do while loop it don't check for the condition first first of all it execute this block of code one time it execute this block of code one time and asking from the user enter a value less than 20 user will enter a value if the value is um, bigger than 20 or equal to than 20 then we will execute this block of code to ask for the user to please try again if the value is less than 20 then we will not execute this block of code also and while program is going to execute this block of statements it reaches for the condition is value equal or bigger than 20 if it is true i mean if a user writes something like 25 which is bigger than 20 the condition will become true and the program will execute this block of statements again if it is 40 yes it is bigger than 20 this will this condition will become true and this block of statements will execute it again until uh, user writes something which is smaller than 20 like we are writing 15 while user writes 15 15 is not equal to or not bigger than 20 then the condition will become false while the condition is false program will stop looping and it will execute the rest of code which is done we have done here this is do while loop only one difference is there in while loop first program checks for the condition if the condition is true program will execute the block of code if it is not true then program will not execute that block of code but in do while loop first program execute the body of uh, the do while loop after it checks for the condition if the condition is true it will execute the body of code again but if the condition is not true then it will be executed one time let's talk about for loop for loop is uh, talking about looping for a specific number of times or we can see if you know how many times you want to execute a block of code then we are going to use for loop in for loop first we initialize a variable and check for the condition if the condition is true program will execute these statements and it will increment our variable by one if the condition is false then program will stop looping and execute the rest of code syntax for for loop we will write for keyword and write uh, three things in its parentheses first initialization we should initialize a variable we should write condition we should write increment and after that it will be the body of loop which is statements or block of statements will be there initialization is executed one time before the execution of the block of code condition defines the condition for executing block of code increment is executed every time after block of code is executed let's talk about for loop and its example this is example it's our main function here first we are writing for keyword and in parentheses we are going to declare and initialize a variable which name is ammo while ammo is bigger than zero then execute this block of code and, and at the end decrement ammo by one program will execute this body while ammo is bigger than zero and we will increment it by one while uh, it is uh, not bigger than zero it means while it is zero or smaller than zero then program will execute the rest of code and it will write out of ammo let's talk about it we want to make a game with c plus plus code we have our gun and weapons we have uh, s ammo and we have bullets in our ammo we know that some types of uh, guns or weapons have uh, 
30 bullets in a with itself and it can be executed 30 times then in this condition we know exactly how many times we want to fire then for that reason we want to use for loop let's talk about for loop in visual studio code let's write for and ammo is equal to 30 while ammo is bigger than zero every time decrement ammo by one this is the body of far loop let's print the value of ammo If ammo reaches zero, then we have to write out of ammo. Let's do that. Now, first, let's save our program and run the program. We will check. Oh, we have an error was not declared. Oh, here we have problem. Now it's right. It will work this time. Oh, let's check it. While program reaches to far loop, it declares and initializes a variable with the name of ammo and its value is 30. This will be executed one time at the start or at the beginning of far loop. After that, this will be run every time before uh, execution the body and this will be executed every time after executing the body. What does it mean? First, while program reaches to far loop, it declares a variable which is which which value is 30 then it checks for the condition is ammo bigger than 30 yes it is bigger than 30 then it's going to print the value of ammo which is 30 and at the very end while program reaches to the end of far loop it decrements ammo by one and again it comes for the condition it checks condition is ammo still bigger than uh, zero yes 29 is bigger than zero this condition is true again it uh, executes the body and print the value of ammo which is 29 and at the end it decrements ammo by one and this time the value of ammo is 28 it checks for the condition again 28 is bigger than 0 the condition is true it executes the body and print the uh, value of ammo which is 29 at the very end it decrements ammo by 1 its new value is 29 and comes again check for the condition it is true it prints it again which is 29 decrement uh, 27 by 1 this time it is 26 and checks for the condition until it comes to 1 while it comes to 1 it checks for the condition yes 1 is bigger than 0 it print the value of ammo which is 1 and decrements ammo by 1 this time it will be 0 while it's 0 checks for the condition 0 is not bigger than 0 because it's equal it's not bigger than 0 this time it becomes false the condition is false while the condition is false then the body will not be executed and it will not decrement anymore because the body is not executed remember that this incrementing or decrementing value will be executed after after the body is executed if the body is executed this will execute but if body is not executed then this one will also not be executed while program knows that the condition is false then it execute the rest of code which is out of ammo and 
it is out of ammo it's printed here now we know about far loop let's talk a little bit about difference between while loop and uh, far loop why we have to use far loop when we have while loop as well we have to use while loop when we don't know about exactly how many times we want to execute the body of while loop but we will use far loop while we know exactly how many times we want to execute the body of our loop that's it let's talk about functions what are functions first let's uh, see um, functions in our real life for example we write a book and millions of people need it around the world then is it possible to write a book millions of times of course no writing a book millions of times is not an easy work then how is it possible to do one work repeatedly even millions of times for doing that we have different kinds of machines like we have printer for printing our books then we're writing our book once and we give it to printer and tells it to print it for us millions of times and it is easy for printers to do it for us functions work the same we are writing a function once and we can call it over again and again but what is the good thing here as in our real life we can use one machine for multiple different works like we can use printer for printing different kinds of books like if we give a book of programming then it will print that for us if we give a book of um, chemistry it will print that for us if we give a book of maths then it will print that for us what is the main point here it means that the output of our function depends into the input of our, of our function any input we give to the printer it will give us a different output for that now let's talk about function in maths i'm sure you know about these kinds of functions here again we have the function input the function process and the function output what are these for example if x is equal to 2x square plus x plus 3 what is this x is the input for our function and this is the process of our function as we can see 2x square plus x plus 3 and anything given here is the output let's give this function different inputs and we will see different outputs here this is the function and if we pass 0 or if we give an input of 0 then the output of the function will be 3 if we give it 5 the output of the function will be 58 and if we give it 10 then the output of the function will be 213 again main point is here that output is dependent into the input and function will give us a different output for different inputs what are functions in programming functions are self-contained models of code which do a specific task function usually take in data and process it and return something for us three points again input process and output what is good thing in a function once we write a function it can be reused over and over again it means that we don't have to write code again and again once we write a code for a specific task then we will pass different arguments into that or we will give different inputs into that then we will have different output depending in our inputs to our function while we need a code multiple times the good thing is that to write that in a function then we will not be required to write that code again and again because we will only recall that function again and again that will be very easy for us let us see how function works in programming or in c this is our code and as we know compiler will start compiling our program from main function then this is the chart of our program compiler will start it from compiling main function and then it will come to declare and initialize these numbers 
after that it will reach to calling a function which is add and we are passing to argument into that then it will start compiling our program as you can see it will come to compile this function and it will start compiling this function from top to bottom here as you can see we pass to argument into that and adding two numbers number one plus number two and returning that while compiling the function is completed then compiler is coming back to our main function and starting the rest of the program and finally why do we need function here the most important point is that they allow us to reuse code instead of rewriting a code and we can see while we have an error or we, we want to debug our program, then functions allow us to test small parts of our program. Function in C++ While we need a function in C++, then how can we write that function? Let's learn structure of that function in C++. For writing a function in C++, we have to write its return type and function name. Here we can pass some parameters into that and open curly bracket, close curly bracket. Inside curly bracket is the body of the function. Let's see what is the return type. As we can understand from its name, that is the return value of the function while it is completed. Like we see, uh, like we saw in previous lectures, a function should have an output and the return type is the output type. That what this function will return or what will be the output of this function. Like uh, that will be the, the type of function like it will uh, return an int or string or char or anything else. Because we should know about what a function is going to return for us. And function name we know what should be the name of the function but the most important point is that we should give a name to a function that what is what actually do like if a function is going to add two numbers then we have to give it a name like add numbers or in game development we have if a function is going to short or if a function is using for jump or something else then we have to give it a name like what it does like if a is going to jump for the character we have to give it a name like jump if it's going to use for shoot then we have to give it a name like shoot and remember we have to give a function a name for what it does i'm repeating this again give a name to a function according what it does parameters or arguments the variables passed into the function or we know a function should have an input or we can pass some inputs to function draw parameters we can pass different values and variables to a function or we can see this is the input type of function or we can see through our parameters we can input something to the function and finally we have function body the statements that are executed when the function is called or we can see this is the process while function is called then compiler will compile this body Steps to writing a function Understand the purpose of function While we are going to write a function we should understand why we are going to write this function and what is the goal for this function If we need to pass some data to the function or input something to the function we can pass that through our parameters and we should know the types of input data and we have to know about the types of output that what this function will give us after completing and we should know about the body of the function we have to write code inside the body of the function let's see function parameters how can we write parameters uh, to a function or how can we pass parameters to the function Information can be passed to the function as parameter and parameters act as variables inside the function We can pass as many parameters as we want into the function just we have to separate the, them by comma 
like this is why this directory type of function function name here we can pass inside the parentheses parameter one and comma parameter two comma parameter three and as many as parameters we want we can pass them here inside the parentheses let's see this example here is our example we're going to define a function its return type is void and its name is my function and we want to pass one string variable parameter into this function let's see inside the body we want to write the process of this function what this function will do it will uh, print uh, a name or month name for us a month of a year and let's run our program before running our program let's write this program inside visual studio code and we will see what's happening there here is our visual studio code and we can write some code here first let's write a new function here its return type is white and my function is its name it need one parameter which is type string and its name is m name or month name and let's write function body here i'm going to write stdc out m name is a month of the year for new line and let's call this function inside the main function if you don't call this function inside main function then it will not work because compiler always only compile the body of main anything outside main function will not be run let's call it my function and it need it needs something like fib february and let's call my function again and this time let's pass march let's call our function again and this time we're going to pass april now this is our program and let's run our program and see how it works oh here we have an error and what's that error for uh, our compiler cannot understand what string let's give it uh, std namespace because string is from the standard library and while we are going to use string we have to give std to that let's run our program now now we can see the output of our program let's talk about it fib is a month of the year march is a month of the year and april is the month of a year how does it work first we defined our function here its name is my function and what does this function do we see that it is printing uh, this variable which is passed to the function and right is a month of the year compiler will not compile this function because as we know compiler always starts compiling program from main function and it only compiles the body of main function anything outside main function will not be compiled then if we call this function inside main function that will be compiled otherwise it will not be compiled and we will not have an output here we will see that just in a minute Compiler, while compiler starts compiling from main function, it says that uh, main function calls my function and pass February into that. Then compiler comes to my function 
and executes my function uh, which is going to print my name this time we passed February into that and write is the month of a year and it's printing Fave is a month of the year this is printed here let's see again while executing this function is completed compiler is coming back to the main function while it's completed it is coming back here and says that we are going to call our function again main function and this time we passed March into that while it's called again compiler is coming and executing this function again and this time input is March and it's going to output March is the month of a year while this function is completed it comes back to main function we're going to compile fun my function again this time passing April and it is going to update month name again and printing that again April is a month of a year while executing this function is completed again it comes to main function and says return zero which is the successful execution of the program and we have the result here if we don't call the function inside main function what will happen function will not be executed let's test it let's run our program and here as you can see we don't have any output here because we have not called our my function and inside main function there is nothing to be output into the terminal that's why we don't have any output here now let's talk about next topic which is return type. Now we know about the process and the input of our function. But what is the return type? Or, or how can a function give us some output from inside the function body? If you want the function to return a value, you can use a data type such as int string instead of white and use the return keyword inside the function. Function returning a value. For function that uh, define a return type, the return statement inside the body of function is required. And we have to write uh, return value after return keyword inside the body of the function. But if we don't want to return anything from the function, uh, we can use void keyword and writing return keyword at the end of the body of a function is uh, optional we can write it or we can skip it and the most important point is that we can store a returned value from the function inside a variable let's see the example to return int value we have to write return type as we want to return int value then we have to write int at the start before name of function and my function is the name of the function passing two parameters into the function here function returns x plus y which is uh, an int because x and y both are int addition of int should be int and in main function we are going to call our function and store the returned value inside this variable which is type int because function is going to return int and we can see out our value from here if we don't want to return anything from the function we have to write void keyword and now we can write anything inside the function body but it will return nothing and remember that if you want to store a value of function inside the variable which is not going to return something then that will be error let's write this code inside visual studio code let me change this function and name it add nums it needs two parameters of type int where x and int y and it returns let me remove this function let's write a new function here it returns int and we have to write int returning type add nums is the name of function and it needs two parameters of type int x and int y let's write the body of function it should return x plus y 
Now let's call this function inside the body of the function. First, let's write std see out and it will see out what it will see out add names and let's pass two values this five and three now let's run this program let's talk about this we have it here in output how does it works we defined a function here which can return an int value and it needs two parameters of type int and its name is x and y. As this function has a return type of int then it should return something. For returning that we have to write return keyword and write the return value after return keyword. It means that this function will return the value of x plus y anything we are passing to this function it will give us the addition of those numbers now let's call this function this function is using for addition and we are going to pass 5 plus 3 and print the addition of that number while compiler reaches here it goes to execute this function which is defined here and we are passing to values 5 into x and 3 into y and the return value will be 3 plus 5 which is it compiler will return it from the function and it will come back here and see it and then it will print it to the terminal let's see if i don't print the return value of the function what will happen I'm going to call this function and pass its values if I run my program. Why there is not any output in our program? Because this, this function is only returning a value and not printing that. We have to print that value like we did it in previous example. But the good news is that, that we can store the returning value inside a variable. Let's do that. I will declare a variable of type int and its name should be z and z is equal to add nums uh, anything returned from the function will be stored inside the z now if i print z now i'm going to print z and the value of z is anything returned from the add nums function then it will print it for us again Let's run this program. As we expected, our output is it again. Because what happened here? Compiler starts compiling from a main function and it declares our z value here. And z is equal to, or we're going to assign a value to z, which is add numbers, the returning value of add numbers. Let's pass two values to add numbers, which is five and three. And while we are calling our add numbers function, compiler comes here and it calls add numbers. The value of x is three. The value of x is five and the value of y is three. Five plus three is equal to eight and the return value is eight it comes back here and stores the return value into z which is 8 here our z value is equal to 8 and while we are going to print our z value it's going to print 8 for us now if i don't want any returning value from the function what will happen let's define a function which don't return a value for not returning a value, we have to give it void because void is using for not returning or returning nothing from the function. And its name, let's give it hello. I don't want to pass any parameters into this function. And inside function body, I want to call std see out hello world. And now let's call this function. It returns nothing, but we can call this function. Let's see. Hello. 
and just that's enough now let's run our program and see what's happening here as we can see we have hello world into output because uh, we know about the process compiler comes here and execute this function come back to main and ends the program here hello world is hello world is our output let's call this function again and again I want to call this function five times let's run our program this time I will see hello world five times because I called this function five times and now let's do a different work let's store the value of hello inside a variable let me declare a variable of type int and its name is x is equal to hello and now let's run our program what is going to happen now oh we have error and what is that error it says that in function main uh, we have error void value we have error here that uh, our return type is void and it means that this function is not returning anything then how which value you want to store in x because hello is not returning anything it is not returning a value if uh, a function is returning a value then we can store it in a variable or we can print it but while a function is not returning something, while its returning type is void, then we cannot store that into a variable. Hey there, this is a quick summary of the section that what we covered in this section and which topics are more important that if you have any kind of problem in this, please repeat that video again. So first important topic of this section was compile and errors. Then we talked about variables. What are variables and what is different types of variables? Like we have int variables, we have a char variables, we have float variable and double variables and many more. We talked about how to declare variables and how to use those variables and how to change their values again during the program. And then we jumped into the constants. Constants are uh, same as variables, but the only difference between variables and constants are that that variables are changeable values and constants are non-changeable. It means that we cannot change constant value during the program once we give a value to a constant. And then we talked about arrays. We talked how to declare variables. It is same as variables. We can give any name to arrays and we can give any type like int, like float, like double. And then we talked about expressions and statements, different types of expressions. We talked about operations and operands and different types of operators. So what are operands and what is operators and finally what is a complete operation those are very important we can use different operators inside uh, fl statement inside looping so uh, that are very important for giving any condition to any if statement or if else statement or giving them back to while or do while or for loop statements and after that we have if else statements how to uh, give a condition to if statement if that condition was true what will be uh, executed if that condition is false then what will be executed we will give different uh, body to else if uh, first condition was not true then program will execute else statement but if we have two condition if first condition is true then do not repeat this to other conditions so or we can use if else if first condition is true then do not uh, uh, execute second condition or third condition else if if first condition was not true then execute second condition so we can use f statement we can use else f statement and we can use else for different conditions and then we talked about looping how to use looping different types of looping like while loop do while loop and for loop 
and then we talked about function different types of functions its return type wide return type int return type and many more returning types and then we talked about giving different names to functions its rules and finally we talked about function parameters and arguments finally we talked about pointers we covered how to use pointers in a program so these were the topics we covered in this section i hope you learned these topics but if you still have any kind of problem in these topics please repeat that video again but if you still have that problem please ask in the program section hey welcome to third section in this section we will talk about how to use c plus plus or how to use those basics which we learned in previous section so if you understood all those topics very well and you think you don't have any kind of problem in this you can easily skip this section but if you want to repeat and understand how to use c plus plus in a real program then you can watch this section let me tell you what we will cover in this section first we will talk about variables how to use variables in a real program how to declare them and how to change them during program then we will talk about string input which is very important like inputting any string into program and like sometimes we need to input a big sentence or even a paragraph in this section we will talk about that how to input a paragraph into a c++ program and then we will cover if else statement how to use if else statement in a real program and how does that work and finally we will cover for loop for loop also it's very important we covered that in previous section we talked about that it's parameters and everything but in this section i will tell you how to use a for loop in a real program and how to use that in different functions and uh, communication between different functions so this is a little bit uh, important section i think for those who don't know how to use c++ in a real program they can watch this section and I hope they will learn something from here. Hey, welcome again. In this section, we are going to create a secret messenger. Here, how we want to convert letters to secret letters and back secret letters to letters. If you understood all the section before and you do need to practice your functions and those related things which we learned in previous section, and you can skip this section without worrying about it but if you still need to practice your function skills and understand better how to use and why to use functions and variables constants and many more i mean if you don't know how to write a complete program from zero then you can follow this section otherwise you can skip it let's start uh, writing our code from completely beginning first this is our visual studio code and here we know about it we should create a new file and i think we don't need to we don't need get started window i want to close it first of all i want to save this in desktop i want to create a new folder and name it like secret messenger and here i want to give a name to my program secret messenger dot cpp we already know about this that why should we give dot cpp extension to our file because it's required for all c++ files this is our c++ file and here we are going to start our program from complete beginning first i want to include my standard library and here i use stream library let me write using namespace because it's not a good idea to write using namespace at the top std because in programs we use different namespaces then it's not good idea to write using namespace at the top std but uh, in this program i want to write it because it will help us to uh, write our program faster and here i want to write int this is our main function and here is the body of our main function here we already know we should write return zero because that means the successful execution of the program 
Now let's start our program from zero. Our goal is to create a secret messenger. Then we need some letters to convert from. I want to write a string. Its type should be string because string is using for storing many letters. Now I want to give it a name like all letters and let's initialize it to I already have letters here with myself then I will copy that here remember that give a space here because it's required because we use space in our messenger as well then space is also a character and, uh, and our program should understand space as well and now it's time to declare another variable which should be secret letters um, let's initialize it to different letters like I just want to write these letters here remember uh, that uh, your letters should not be repeated because if there is repeated letters then it will make problems in your secret messenger you can copy these letters or you can write your own that's your choice and let's declare a new variable string and this should be user input i want to give it a name like user input and initialize it to nothing uh, then we have variables and we have constants uh, Variables are using to be changeable during the program But we use constants which should not be changeable during the program because uh, We once we initialize it then user or any other person who are using our program or our code should not be able to change the constant letters then we should declare these two types as constants because we don't want to allow users to change our all letters or to change our secret letters these should not be variables these should be constants or we mean that they should not be changeable for writing constant we can write const keyword at the before uh, variable type and anymore it is not a variable it is a constant and this is a constant type which is string but we don't want to declare user input as constant because we want to change user input and the user can input anything he want it is changeable then it should be a variable but initialize it to nothing now it is time to tell the user input something for us for doing that let's write c out and right enter your message okay in line at the end and I want to just write C in and let's write something like uh, user input variable this is our program let's write let's first see out our user input variable and check if it's working or not see out your message is user input and let's give an end line at the end and let's save and compile our program here program is asking a message from us and we're going to write something like hi there let's oh he's going to output something your message is high why not there we're right there as well because there is a problem with cn we have problem here cn is going to uh, enter only letters not space between letters then that's problem with cn to solve this problem we're not going to use cn directly uh, we're going to write get line and let's write say in user input this function we are going to call this function from io stream library which can give the ability of entering space between characters to say in then we should write get line like this until we will be able to write space between characters let's check our program now and how is it working or not 
hi there and this time again we have this one what's wrong here let's check it and we will see save run program again hello world and here yeah it's working last time i think i well, i didn't save my program and once i saved again and run it again now this time it's working okay we checked our program and it's working till now now it's time to delete this because we don't need it and let's continue writing your code here i want to declare a new variable which is type int and i want to give it a name like char position I want to initialize it to something from all letters okay here is something wrong all letters and now it's working yeah all letters dot find is a function uh, belongs to string I want to call that function from string library and I want to tell him find something from user input dot at it is a function also belongs to string and at zero what does this means let me give it a little bit explanation here we have we declared a variable a type int and its name is char position we want to find a position of character how to find it i'm gonna tell program that uh, find user input first this is our user input uh, which is a string type variable and which user will input something to that and here at at is a function from string and it is going to find single letter inside string letters there should be lots of letters in string and at is going to use a specific letter from string letters and i'm going to tell him the position which letter i want to find i'm telling him find letter at position zero for example user is going to input a and b and c the position of a is zero position of b is one and position of c is two now I'm gonna tell uh, program that find the character which is at the position zero and this and here it should be a and this function is going to return a char or we can see a character from a position like this if user input ABC then this mm, function will return a because at the position zero there is a if there is something like Z x y then the position of z is zero and x is one y is two this time if someone write this thing then uh, this function will return z because uh, character at position zero is that if i write one here then character at position one is x and at two is y okay then it will return this how what does find do find is also a function from string it is also a function from st string and it is going to uh, find uh, the position of character this is a completely opposite function of at it is going to find mm, the position of letter like see if a here is a b c and the position of e is 0, b is 1, and c is 2. If I call this function at, then I should pass a, an integer, like some integer, like 0 or 1 or 2, then the function will search for the position that uh, at position 0, which character is there, and it, it will return a character. But what is find? Find is a complete opposite of at. It needs a parameter which should be a type char 
like we have to pass char and this function will return an int it means that it will return the position of the character back to us and we want to uh, return the position of character and store that in position in char position which is type int find is going to return an integer and add it made a character and int is going to return an character and it needs an integer let me explain you that what will happen if uh, a user write for example d here capital d what will happen here user input will be d and when compiler reach this position it will declare this char position and for initializing it first it will call this function find which needs a parameter of type char here we are going to call another function we are telling program that find a character which is stored in position 0 the program will come and check user input that at position 0 there is stored d at position 0 there is stored d then it will return d and this time we will pass this d into this function which is find and here the compiler will again search in all letters where is d then it will count 26 till here 27 28 29 and 30 the position of d in all letters is 30 then this function will return 30 and here we will store 30 let's check it if it's working like I want to see out something from here and print char position and let's compile our program now I want to write D and it should print 30 for us Oh, it's printed 29 for us because string letters count starts from 0 then that's why it is 29 here then it means we will write okay then in character position it will be stored 29 or anything if we let me let me write a different word here like a and it should be 0 yes it is 0 uh, it means that our program is working fine till here then let's write our more program here i want to tell compiler if uh, char position if char position is not equal to string no position what does it means sometimes if there if our program is not able to find a letter in these letters then it will return something which is no no position then if our program was not able to find a letter there it should not run this code if it run then program will crash let's write code here we want to declare a new variable which is a type char and its name is new letter new letter is equal to i want to find something from in secret letters dot at we already know about this and char position and I want to let's see out if it is working right or not your message is I just want to write new letter but if program was not able to find our letter here then he should then else it should print user input your secret message is user input here okay first let's run our program and then we will check here we have a problem 
that's not small litter. Okay. Now let's run our program. Oh my god, we have too much errors here. What's that? Okay, let's check it. Oh, we have error here and we need one more up around here. Hmm. Sometimes a small mistake can give you that much big error. Be careful writing your code. Okay, let's run it again. And this time, oh, again, something. Let's check it. Where is that? I don't know what's problem this time. Let me run the program again. Okay, sometimes when you don't save your program well, then you will have errors. Save it again and again, you will not have a problem. Okay, let me write something. If I write, for example, A, then your secret message is plus. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because first position zero is A, and in secret letters at position zero is plus, and it means our program is working fine. Let me write something else. Like this time, I want to just write C. And again, it's working fine because at position it is at position two because zero, one, and two here at position two it is rocket it's well and it means our program is working fine but we still we have a big problem if i run my program and write hello if i enter then it will only print one word for us like or if i run it abc and it will only convert first secret letter for us not all we need a program which should convert our complete scene to secret letters okay we will do that in next lecture Okay, welcome again and here we're going to continue writing your code for creating a secret messenger. In previous lectures, we created this program which is able to convert a single character to a secret letter, but that is not able to convert our complete sentence to a secret sentence. Like if I write hello, it will not be able to convert it to a sentence like a secreted hello. For doing that, I want to write first, let me declare a new variable of type string and its name, I want to give it exchange, initialize it to nothing. And here I want to write for loop, for loop, and it needs an integer i, which is equal to zero. And while i is smaller than user input dot size. What is user input dot size? User uh, dot size is also a function from string and we can use uh, that uh, dot size which returns an integer and defines the size of a string object like if someone enters five characters into user input variable the size of user input will be five not five four because it starts from zero then mm, dot size function returns the size of uh, uh, any variable which is type string and that is an integer if that enters five characters then the size of user input will be four because it starts from zero and here it will mean until i is smaller than five or four or three or any letters someone enters let me write i plus plus because you already know about for loop in previous sections we talked about that okay now let me write here again uh, i want to copy all this code from here and paste that code inside for loop and i want to cut it from here also and write it inside for loop and let me arrange our code okay everything is okay but there is only one problem to be solved let me do that as well okay now uh, just i want to write some more code this exchange i want to initialize i want to assign a value to this exchange uh, just plus equal to new later that's it 
and else if that was not found in letters then i want to add something else to exchange which is plus equal user input dot at i at position i and here i want to bring some changes as well at the position i we will want to find and also i think here yeah that's that's, 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 that's it first let's check our program and then i will tell how this program is working enter your message hello world and, oh that's it what is it doing your secret message is like this 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 <laughs> and where what's wrong here let's check what's wrong here your secret message is new letter i don't want to print it here or also i don't want to write it here as well at the end i want to write not for out of for loop uh, let me write c out your secret message is and this time i want to print exchange because our secret message is exchange let's check our program now and let's write hello world and it says yes this is our secret message if we check it here then it will be right i'm sure for that then what's happening here let me explain it a little bit okay here we're telling program that run these sentence these all sentences how many times for example if user input three liters then it will be run three times if he enter five liters it will run for five times and how many liters are there it will run that much times okay we know about that why we entered user input dot size here because we want the size of liters and what's happening here uh, this is from previous we already know about that and here also about if and new letter we know about that in previous lecture we just printed our new letter because that was only one letter but this time we're telling comp compiler that just add our new letter to exchange exchange is declared here and it is a string uh, type variable and we can add char type characters into string just by adding plus into that then every time program breaks here then it checks what is new letter for example first time it will be at position zero and at position zero new letter will be like if it is a then it will be our dash and if it is b then it will be according to secret letters it will check for secret letters and it will add it to exchange but if program was not able to find something which is entered by user like if there is an at then we don't have at the rate in our message letters program will not be able to find it then it will add at itself or some other character which is not included here in these all letters then program will add itself to the converted message which name is exchange and finally when this finished we want to print exchange and that is our secret message let's check i told you if we write a character which is not included in our all letters let me write hi uh, someone which is like i want to write one itself because we don't have one here in our le all letters program will not be able to find it in our all letters then it will add one at the end itself let me enter it and here we have these are converted to secret letters but one is not converted because one is not there in all letters program is not able to find one at all letters then it calls else and in else we are going to add user input itself to the exchange okay that's it for this one and in next lecture we will talk about converting Mm, to secret message and convert thing back from secret message to our real or simple message 
Hey there, welcome back again and now we're going to talk about functions and arranging our code in functions and there is many more things to talk about it in this lecture. Okay, let's do it. First, I want to define a function voice return type is void and I mean we don't want to return anything from that and I want to name it choice selection and it should we want to pass some parameters into that up type string uh, letters and another type string uh, secret letters just that's enough now let's okay now let's write this function here uh, which is void choice selection and string uh, letters string secret letters and as body I just want to declare a new variable of type char and its name should be user choice and let me initialize it to nothing this will be a user choice and user will input anything in that okay let's talk about it. here I want to write do while loop here do something like see out uh, and let me ask user what do you want to do just select something I want more space here that's why i'm entering two times in line and here let's see out again and give users different choices like if he enter a then means uh, convert to secret message you want to convert it to secret message or if he see out something like if he if he enters B, then he, if he want to convert from secret message, then he should enter B and see out Q for exiting the program. Okay, that's uh, for this and let me tell compiler he should enter user choice. This user choice he will enter a character or E or B or Q to these choices he have. If he uh, enters E then it means convert to secret message write your message and convert it to secret message if he enters b then it means convert from secret message you write your secret message and convert it to your simple message if you write q then it will exit the program let's write while here as well and tell uh, we are going to tell program that uh, repeat this while mm. while user choice is not equal to q and user choice is not equal to uh, let me write capital q like if someone writes small q or capital q then there is no difference between these two okay now let's add functionality to these functions i want to tell program that if first let me tell if user input is e then what will happen i want to tell him if user choice is equal to e or user choice is equal to small e then do this for us or let let me tell if 
user input is p what will happen let's tell him if else if uh, user choice is equal to b or user choice is equal to a small b the program will do this and let's tell program that uh, if user input is q what will happen uh, let's write else if here because okay and if it's if someone enters q then else if user choice is equal to q or user choice is equal to small q then what will happen here just try this body and let me add another comment and tell that if user input is something else what will happen if user input is something else then i want to write else here and write the body of else okay here we know if uh, user input something else then we will tell compiler wrong selection please try again uh, okay add twice in line because we will have a little bit space here and if it is Q we know about it that he wants to exit the program then we will have thanks for using our program come back soon let's add in line twice here again okay then if he enters b he want to convert to secret from secret message or if he enters e then he want to convert it to secret message okay then let's write another function for converting some things from each other uh, let's declare a new function it also we want its return type to be void and to give a name like user message changer and it needs string all letters string uh, secret letters okay let me write the correct spelling here and char type choice we also want to pass user choice here as well here let me copy this code for to save some time and let's paste it here okay here we have a uh, user message changer in user message changer i just want to declare a new variable of type string and give it a name like user input user input and initialize it to nothing for now let's tell compiler if uh, this choice which will come from this function if choice is equal to a or choice is equal to a small a then do this else we can write else here or we can write else if uh, maybe someone called this function from somewhere else then if user choice is something else then we should tell do nothing for that just we want the choice um, to be b 
or a small b if it is here then it will do this this for us now let's uh, copy this code from here user input we already declared it there we don't need this user input anymore and just i want to copy this code because just still here don't copy just want to cut it from here and bring him here let me paste it here and we will check what's happening here if a uh, user choice is a then we know about it that the user wants to convert his message to secret message then we will tell compiler write your message to convert it to secret letters write your message to convert it to secret letters and he will input user input from here and let me copy this code again and paste it in else as well in else and again we want to tell write your secret letters to convert it to what message secret letters to message if choice is b then he want to enter his later secret letters to convert to message then the user input will be secret letters otherwise what will be there here we will have letters okay then one last function we need that function i want to write and i want to tell this its return type should be string it means this function will return something of string and its name is exchanged message and it will need a string of user input we have to pass user input into this function a string of convert from uh, letters and pass string convert to letters if you can't understand it right now then don't worry i will explain it uh, just we want to write this function which need two types which needs three string objects first user input uh, what is user input and second will be convert from letters if we want to convert from secret letters then first we should have to pass secret letters and again convert to man single all letters uh, if we want to convert from all letters to secret letters then we have to pass first sec all letters and again secret letters here okay let me write definition let me write this function here and in this function okay let me copy code from main function because we don't need this code here in main function i just want to cut it from here and paste this code here okay here we have uh, exchange here which is uh, initialized to nothing and if you already know about this why we wrote for and these things i explained it in previous lectures and here user input user input it here and that size everything will be here only things we have to change is here uh, okay and is okay all letters we don't want to all letters all letters should be convert from letters we want to give it convert from it will search and convert from letters and here we don't want to write secret letters we want to tell him convert to letters let me write that here and uh, then uh, exchange will be added here everything is okay i think and i think we don't need to bring any more change here 
the only thing we have to do is here I just want at the end to write return what we want to return we want to return this exchange why we want to return exchange because exchange will be the our exchanged message and we want to return that from here from this function to mm, this function here we want to call this function inside our user message changer in this function we want to call our exchange message function if user choice is a then we know that uh, user wants to convert his message to secret message then we will call this function uh, this function name is exchanged message and first he says that user input i want to write just user input pass user input to that and convert from letters he want to convert from message to secret message then convert from letters should be all letters because he want to convert it from all letters convert to you know, he want to convert we already know that he want to convert it to secret letters let's pass secret letters here if he type b then it means that uh, he wants uh, to do what let's let me mm, let me call that function again and pass user input here convert from letters if he type b then it means he want to convert from secret message or secret letters and i want to pass secret letters in place of convert from and we want to convert it to our all letters because all letters is our simple messenger here we know that this function is going to return a string it's going to return a string exchange then we want to print that string i want to write c out and let me tell him that uh, uh, in if he if it is his choice is a convert it from simple message to secret letters then we will write him your secret letters are your secret letters or these it will be printed here and let me add in end line two two times then that because we will have some space here and i want to see out it here as well and write your message is simple message is this and let me add in line and in line again okay we did these two function completely let's write some code in our choice selection let's call our uh, user message changer function inside choice selection if someone is going to enter a then it means he want to convert it from secret message to a, like anything let's write secret okay this function name is user message changer now let's call a function which is user message changer it needs all letters so i want to pass just all letters and it needs secret letters i want to just pass secret letters here and it needs choice for choice i want to pass user choice here and i want to call the same thing here as well just no different between these two okay i just want to or we can delete these if else from here and uh, tell if user input is a or user input is b then here i just want to write or a user choice is equal to b let me write big b first uh, or again i want to add r here 
and tell him user input is equal to a small b okay i think our program is ready to use uh, let's let me re delete this sentence from here and uh, let's compile our program and run it but i believe that it will do nothing for us just check oh there is too much errors here string we have one problem here which is string just we have to write string a complete string here and let's write it here as well okay let me save it and run program again wow congratulations our program have no error this time and it means we wrote our program completely correct uh, then but it does it nothing because as you can see program is running and it closes do nothing because we know that compiler starts compiling program from main function and it only uh, do anything which is in main function it don't do anything which is outside of main function and we didn't call any function inside main function Mm, it means that we have to call a function. I want to call this choice selection function here Choice selection function and in choice selection function it needs all letters. Let me call Let me pass all letters into that and it needs secret letters as well. Let me call secret letters and Let's save our program and run it okay wrong selection <laughs> please try again okay we did one mistake i will do this first let's come here and okay <laughs> first we have to bring this uh, before if first user should enter his choice and again we will check for user choice okay let me do this now now it's working correctly convert to secret message uh, let me write type a and oh we have a problem again and it is uh, writing here your secret letters are write your secret message to convert it to secret letters uh, okay your message to convert it to secret letters but we are not able to enter something here because we have some error with uh, c in for solving that error we only have to write c in dot ignore function before calling git line let's write uh, c in dot ignore this function we have to call if sometimes you face this kind of problems you can call say in dot uh, ignore function uh, before calling get line okay this time I believe we will not have any error let's run our program and check I want to write a and write your message to convert it to secret letters i just want to write hello world and let me enter it your secret letters are my secret letters are these let me copy these letters from here and this time i want to convert it from secret letters means i want to convert it from secret letters to my message i want to select b this time and let me just pass this we which means hello world and let me convert it and your message is hello world it means that our our application is working for both sides completely correct and that's a good news for us let's check some other things like if I convert R then what will happen wrong selection please try again if I write T wrong selection if I write one wrong selection if I write anything that will be wrong selection for us if I write Q then it will exit our program thanks for using our application come back soon let me run it again and check if there is everything is okay let me write a with capital letters and yeah it's working 
Hi. There. And let me copy this again. And this time tell him B, select B. Let me write something like this. Uh, B with capital letter. And check it if it's working or not. Then I will paste. And it will be hi there. Uh, let me write Q with capital letter and enter. Yeah, everything is working correctly. Okay, that's our last lecture of this section and we explained everything for creating a complete secret application which is able to convert your message to secret message and convert your secret message back into your simple message. Then uh, it's everything is working good. We learned that how function are working together, how function call works, how to pass different variables in one from one function to another function and good relationship between function we are passing here in this function we are passing these three letters into exchange message function and it is going to return back our change exchanged message and we are going to directly print that from here that's very good and we are going to uh, prevent writing many lines of code and that's only possible with using functions that's the good thing for using functions here uh, still we have lots of problems I know that that if we try we can do that these all these things just in uh, two functions mm, I think we don't need to use our message changer function we only can do this in these two functions you can try that just try to write your code as less lines as possible just add comments everywhere that it will help you in future coming back into this application code or helping other people who are going to check your code or use your code that will help everyone adding these comments and i think there is some other things to tell you that we have still some problems here we have to pass these variable straw pointers we already know about uh, pointers and reference variables because her program is going to copy all the letters from here to this function from this to this function and that takes lots of time and then we have to call it through pointers you already know about pointers and you can and you can pass their addresses to another function passing variables by reference address will help you to uh, prevent your program from large sizes and copying uh, a variables many times in different places. That's all for this section. I hope to see you soon again in next section. Hey, this is a quick summary of uh, third section in which we talked about how to use C++. Let me tell you what we covered in this section and which topics are most important here. We covered variables, its declaration and its use in a real program. We talked about string input and inputting a complete paragraph into a C++ program. We talked about if else statements and how to use that in a real program and how to connect that in different functions. And finally, we used for loop in our program. We used how to pass different parameters from different functions into the for loop and how to get a result from that.